Oh, hello and welcome everyone. It's time for another Incarnate live stream. Today, we're going to be making rivers. Yes! I love making rivers. I love explaining them. They are super cool. So this is going to be a really, really, really fun stream, I think. Everyone's probably going to enjoy it. I know I will. So I am ready for that. Hey, your majesty, Monsieur King Clown, welcome. Glad that you are here. All right, yeah, sweet. I'm gonna let people filter in, but real quick, I'm just gonna go ahead and break down a little bit about what we're gonna be doing in this stream. And this stream's gonna be broken down into two segments. The first segment is going to be just breaking down river mechanics, how they operate, how they form, where they start, and where they end. This is gonna be really helpful to you when it times to apply that information to your actual map. Okay, that will be part two, where I will be making a river in all six map styles. So part one, we're going to be doing uh, a segment on river mechanics through a series of pre-made guides and diagrams. And then we'll be doing actual application in the tool. So I'm excited for this. River mechanics is super cool. It's fun. I am not a professional in this field. <laughs> I'm just an armchair scientist. So... I really enjoy just gathering information and resources to try to understand how it works so that I could break it down in, a, in an easy format through the tool for you. All right, so sweet. Let's not waste any time, okay? I'm going to go ahead and just edit this map. I'm going to jump right in. Now, if you're looking for these guides that I'm going to be using, they are on my profile on our website, okay? So go check out my profile, and then you will find both those guides at the top ready. And they're clonable, so go ahead, clone them, and use them if they're helpful to you. Now, just I want to give a quick a shout out to the actual creators of this guide. I created this guide from an encyclopedia guide that I saw. So I want to give a proper shout out, uh, recognition to the actual where I got this guide from. I just replicated it in the tool. So this is pretty cool. So first, let's talk about <clears throat> how rivers start and where they end, okay? So number one, snowfall accumulates and creates a source, okay? The source is where all that glacier, snowfall, rainfall, it creates a source. Rising temperatures melts that snow, and that running snow melts and gathers in what's called headwaters, okay? So right over here, let's go ahead and just show you what we're talking about. You got snowfall right here. That You've got a snowfield, a glacier. That's going to melt, and it's going to have a source right here, okay? From that source, it's going to go into what's called your head your headwaters. Okay, so rivers start in the mountains with a source from snowfall, glaciers. If you're going to have a, uh, a river on your map, maybe you should have that river coming from a mountain that has some snow on it so that it implicates that, hey, this is where that is coming from, that snow melt. All right, so just a little guide there. So when you are, again, world maps, parchment, put a little bit of snow at the top of your mountain. Path tool, use a stamp with snow on it, whatever it is you need to do, okay? So now once that's happened, we're going to the next second, the headwaters runs down the slopes to more level ground, leveler ground. Everything the water touches becomes what's called a watershed. So this whole section, that whole thing is called a watershed. And believe me, there's a lot of those out there. Now there are other, there are creeks and other branches that connect to the meandering river. Now we're going to be touching base on what meandering is in a more in-depth guide here in a moment, but I'm going to highlight what the meandering is. And it's these slopes, it's this S-curve that you see that I'm making with this red path tool. That right there is called meandering. All right, super cool. You're going to want to always do meandering on your maps, whatever style that you're, you're working with, okay? So what's the next part? There's something called the fall line, and that's an imaginary line between two parallel rivers. That means rivers kind of uh, flowing relatively parallel to each other, all right? And the point where the rivers plunge or fall, that's, so you're going to see usually like waterfalls. You notice here that you have the fall line. It's right here. And then you'll notice that there are waterfalls right here at the fall line where and then the rivers can connect with each other all right i'm gonna go ahead and delete those paths all right 
I hope this is making sense so far. So rivers meander depending on the obstacles that block the river's path. So river islands are held together by roots or large trees or hard rock. So there's a river island right here. You can kind of see it right here. There's usually like the tree, the roots from those trees keeps the dirt together and there's not enough pull or enough, um, enough speed in the flow of the river to push that away. Given time, that river island will probably erode over a long period of time. All right, so rivers widen as they reach the ocean. Now, the reason why that is is because as it flows further and further, it causes the shores to separate further and further from each other. And I'll explain a little bit more of that in detail in the next uh, part, okay? All right. Now, sometimes um, rivers, when they reach the ocean, uh, there'll be, there's not enough flow of the water going out to the ocean for it to push the sediment out. So slower moving waters allow sediment to build up. Those, that sediment that builds up is called a delta. You see the islands right here? There's not enough flow from the river to push the sediment. Over time, the sediment just builds up, creating these little sand islands, which are called a delta, okay? Super cool stuff. And I'll explain that in more detail as well. Now, I hope that makes sense, but that is basically the journey. Just I'll round it up again. Starts at the top or stops at, starts at the mountains where the snow is. It meanders down, making its way out to the ocean, meandering as it goes. And we'll explain a little bit about an oxbow lake as well. Super cool. I want to explain that because it's pretty interesting, really. Good morning to you, Wandano. Welcome. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get out of here. And we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. Again, you can find this guide on my profile. Uh, this is rivers made with the subtract tool, the subtract mode of the mask tool. There are other ways to make rivers as well. Uh, you can also make rivers with the path tool. Sometimes when you're working with scale, the the uh, the one size with the subtract tool is simply not uh, wide enough or, or not small enough to portray a river at a certain scale. So you can actually use the path tool to create a river and that way you don't have you can just bypass the uh, the stroke effects because sometimes your stroke effect might be white on the outside like a shadow and that shadow will make your river just look pure white because there's not enough distance between the two edges to, to show whatever your river color is. That's where path tools come in handy. Okay, you can find this guide also on my profile at the top. Feel free to clone and edit and use it. Okay, let's move on to the next segment. I'm going to be editing this map. I'm going to be showing you a little bit about how meandering works, how, to, how an oxbow lakes are created, and also how river deltas are deleted. Created. <laughs> deleted. <laughs> I'm going to drink a little bit more of this coffee. <laughs> I think so, King Clown. You mean deltas? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the river, the river Nile. Uh, it much of the people in Egypt rely on the the flooding of the of the Nile for their crops to grow. So it's a super important part of the agriculture, at least at a certain time. So I always thought that that was very interesting. So very very cool. Okay, so let's talk about meandering. Okay, so first thing you got to know about meandering is is that meandering is super interesting I'll, here's the meandering right here i'll explain a little bit in this one what's really interesting about meandering is that there's actual uh, mathematical uh, from people studying uh, meandering they discovered that the meanders are about oof, six times the length or the width of the river itself so kind of, unless there's things obstructing it so it's really kind of interesting and i if you anyone has more information about this stuff, feel free to include that, by the way, uh, in the in the chat, because I I don't know it all, and I obviously can't talk about all of it in one stream. Okay, so let's talk about meandering real quick. So how is it that you get these curves in the meander, right? These curves are created by erosion along um, the along the bank. Okay, so normally I'll kind of give an example. Uh, so you have uh, for instance, maybe like a beaver uh, builds um, a little den 
in here, okay? Like a den, right? But that that den right there also <clears throat> is uh, has weakened the bank. It's made it weaker, right? So the bank is now much, much weaker. So what will happen over time as the flow co collides into that weaker part right here, what's gonna happen is, is that it's going to break down. So this side will break down more and more. Now, as that breaks down, what also happens is, is that grab, it builds down and gravity pulls the direction of the water and it pulls the flow in another direction. So it starts to go in this direction a little bit. It pushes the flow. Over time, it flows, 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 and it pushes that out, okay? And so that's what causes that meandering. So young rivers have less meandering, while older rivers have way more meandering, okay? So what creates these giant curves is meandering. It's over time, the sediment breaks down. And what's interesting is as this, as the flow is directed to one side, the other side will also begin to build up sediment because the current has become weaker. So this side will begin to grow, build more and more sediment that's being caught in the flow because also the direction has changed and the flow direction has changed. So that's what causes that meandering. Not too hard to figure out, it's super interesting. Again, younger rivers have less meandering, older rivers have a lot, a lot, lot more. What's also super cool is oxbow lakes, okay? Oxbow lakes are super interesting, super, 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 super interesting. So what happens is, is that sometimes over a long period of time, maybe two meandering bends will collide with each other. No. So let's go ahead and break that down. I'll show you how that works. So let's say that these sections right here, sorry about that, let's add that. These sections right here begin to break into each other. They collide into each other. Oops, excuse me. I guess I got in your way. Pardon me. Oopsie. This will go all the way and maybe we'll connect into each other like this, okay? So what will happen is, is that this river, the flow will connect and then it will direct the flow away from this section right here, okay? Then this becomes an oxbow lake where you see this kind of a, a shape like this. That's how an oxbow lake is created. When two meandering bends collide to each other, oops, pardon me, excuse me, and then it redirects the flow to each bend and then forces the flow away and then drains that other bend, that other bend, and then turns it into a lake. Okay. Dun, dun. All right. Oh, first time chat. Hey, thanks for mentioning that. Appreciate it. I do like it when people put their information in the chat. I like it. Okay, so let's talk about river deltas. So river deltas. A river delta, as which we talked about in the previous um, segment of the stream, was that there might not be enough flow for sediment to be pushed further and further out from the ocean. So what will happen is sediment will begin to build up over a given period of, period of time. So let me go ahead and this. Hey, Cyberwolf, glad that you are here. Awesome. So sediment will build up over time. It will keep pushing up against each other like this until it rises all the way up to the top, and kind of creates a, a small island, right? So that is how river deltas are formed. There's just not enough sediment, not enough speed for the sediment to be pushed further out into the ocean. And so it kind of creates these river islands, which are, or these islands called deltas. All right, it's really as simple as that, nothing too complex, but very interesting. Anyone has any bit more information to share, be my guest. I like it. There we go. We'll go ahead and fix that. So it's on there. There we go. <laughs> kind of creates a river delta. So certain segments, obviously this isn't a full stop. You're, the flow would continue on in front. So not a very good diagram, but it's close enough. Okay. All right. Sweet. All right. Thanks, everyone. 
All right, so let's go on and move on to the next step. That didn't take too long, just 15 minutes. I like it. So we're going to go ahead into a, a pre-made diagram that I set up, and we're going to start putting some rivers. Take that knowledge that we just learned, and we're going to apply it to each map style in a little uh, section that I made. We're going to give that a second to load. All right. Uh, fantasy world. Okay, so <clears throat> now I'm going to start with the world styles first because it's a different scale. So it's fantasy world and parchment world are probably going to be at a much, much zoomed out scale, so much smaller. So we'll talk about how to do rivers with the mask tool as well as with the path tool. So we learned in the previous segment that uh, they start in the mountains, right? So this is fantasy world. So let's go into the catalog and we're going to make sure we pick fantasy world. All right, we're going to pick some mountains. All right, so you a couple options here. You can just pick the, these snow-capped mountains if you'd like and just throw them down. And we'll make a mountain range for that water to start. So 100% looks just fine. It's a nice, decent scale. So let's just go ahead and put a mountain range down. And just like the river, I'm going to have it meander a little bit. I'm not going to put too much detail into it. Just a little bit. Put in some smaller ones. Just going to put just a few details. Mm, let's go ahead and use brown. And we'll put some foothills in. Okay, there we go. Works just fine for me. Let's throw in a couple for uh, the river to interact with as well. And I'm going to move every one of this stuff up a little bit. There we go. I think that should work just fine. We'll take it right up. All right. All right. I want to create a segment to where there is an ocean, so we'll get to that. All right. Oh, let's move it down to here. We'll add that text after that. Oh, just want to say thank you again, Deathlock666, for your contribution. Appreciate it. I love it when people speak in the chat with what they know. Perfect. Okay. All right. So I've made a little bit of landscape here. I'm not going to worry about blending. The whole purpose of this tutorial is to talk about rivers. So I'm not going to worry about mountains. If you are worried about how to make mountains, don't worry. I have a guide for that. And we're going to be doing a stream on that tomorrow at 10 a.m. PST, same time. And it's going to be on how to make mountain ranges for all styles. So I'm excited for that. All right. So Let's go ahead and start with the um, using the subtract mode, and I'll give you an example of how, whether or not it's okay to use maybe uh, the path tool, or like what's the most appropriate time to use either this, the the uh, mask tool or to use the path tool when applying a river. Okay. Yeah, Cyberwolf agreed. Okay. Yeah, we'll be doing battle maps. We'll be doing battle maps as well with rivers. So right here, watercolor battle maps, battle maps, cities. We'll be getting into all that. We're going to do each style one at a time. Okay, first let's just apply and make sure that uh, this is working. Oops, that I think I have to do add. Let me just double check. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Getting a little bit of lag there. Not sure what's causing that. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Wow. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and fix this. I'm not sure, there we go. Whew, some super lag there. All right, go back to subtract one. I'm just gonna make sure that it's working. Oop, come on, let's put the lag here. Oof. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and save and refresh the page real quick. Let's also save it, of course. All right. Thanks for bearing with me. I drink my coffee. Happy hump day, everybody. It's the middle of the week. I hope that it's going so far, and I hope that the weekend comes very quick. We're all ready for the weekend. The week can't go any faster. <laughs> so happy hump day to you all. All right, then we're going to go ahead and refresh the page. Happy, happy hump day. Yeah, I'm gonna go and refresh the page. 
real quick. I'm not sure what's causing that lag there. So we'll refresh, open it back up, do it again. And I'm going to show you examples about what when's the right appropriate time to really use the mass tool or the path tool. So it's really up to you. Um, and it really just depend, depends on your mask effects, really. So we'll we'll go ahead and touch base on that. All right, there we go. All right, let's go ahead and do the subtract mode again with one, and we'll just go and apply to make sure that it's not causing lag. Oh, it is, indeed. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll go ahead and apply that for now. Go to advanced settings. I'm going to turn off all mask effects for now. Okay, that's fine. And I'm also going to go ahead and make a little bit of the ocean because you're going to see what I mean by mask effects shortly. So let's go back to subtract here. I'm going to go ahead and make some ocean to the side right here. It's just a quick demo. I know it's I know it's rather close, but this is what we're going with. Okay. Now you can see already that there are, the mask effects are quite thick. So we can like turn off all mask effects. Okay, but then at the same time, your land will no longer have mask effects that kind of separates the difference between the land and the water. Okay, so we'll go back to mask effects real quick. And I'm just going to go ahead and use a simple, uh, simple one to kind of show you what I mean. So that way it kind of makes sense. So I'll just go ahead and go with turning the stroke uh, size down to one, make that nice and small. We'll also change uh, the inner and the outer shadows, the outline. We're going to remove all this stuff. Let's go with the outer shadow. All right. Super lag driving me bananas. All right, there we go. I'll show you the most standard kind of mask effects that I've kind of seen. So let's do this. This is the pretty standard right here. What I see a lot of people do is using a black line as your stroke and white as your outer shadow because it kind of creates the shallow and that black line goes against that white making contrast. So it's pretty basic, okay? Now let's say that I want to make my river, right? I'm gonna go with the, let's say the smallest size for right now, okay? And I, it starts in the mountain, so I'll go ahead and have it start here. I'm gonna do my meandering. I can move that mountain there, and we'll go ahead and put it against the, the ocean. Now you'll notice right away that that stroke, that stroke effect uh, is so thick that it kind of removes the line altogether, making it black. Now, if that's cool with you, that's fine. That might be something that you like. That's entirely up to you. Everyone has different preferences on how they really want your river to be. Let's go ahead and make the river a little bit wider at the what's called the mouth. And then I'm gonna have the bends be a little bit wider. So I'll have that be wider. I'm gonna also do this one right here, have this one be wider, and this one as well. Each bend is going to cause it to be a bit wider. Okay, there we go. All right, so there are a couple options if you're not satisfied with the way that your river turns out with these max, ma mask effects. A lot of different options. You can bring the stroke length down a lot more. So when I bring the stroke uh, size down, you'll notice that it kind of... Uh, made a little bit more room, kind of showing more. I can go all the way down to maybe like the smallest size to just one. That way you can really kind of remove that thick, dark black line. So we'll go down super slow. There we go. This is the thinnest that you can pretty much get it right here. Okay, and without just, or you can just turn the stroke off if you wish as well. If you don't want any kind of stroke showing up at all. And you'll still see that it kind of looks nice right there. You have kind of a white kind of line, and then you have the inner shadow, which is white. And you notice that there is, uh, the, sh the river is pretty, pretty light blue in comparison to the ocean. And that also looks nice. If you don't like that, that's okay. Uh, you can always change your outer shadows to the blur to be much, much smaller if you wish, but just know that your coastlines will also be affected that way, okay? So really, when it comes to deciding uh, using the mask tool for your rivers, you're really going to have to focus 
and play around with the mask effects to get what you're looking for okay it's a little bit of work but you know it's up to you so there are other ways besides that as well you see this is kind of a medium sized scale the river is kind of large what happens if you want that river to be much 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 smaller you can totally do that on now for a lot of scale you might on if you're doing a world map uh some maps have it to where the scale is completely i mean you don't even see the rivers at all if it's such a small scale that's up to you whether you want to add rivers on your map or not really should determine if your campaign includes a like a battle map that has a river in it if you have no intention of having an encounter or having something happen that happens at a river uh, you might not need to even include it in your world map especially if it's such a small scale that's entirely up to you now if you absolutely want to have rivers in there that's okay hey first time chat fledgling game welcome so it's really up to you and it really for me it determines the, it's really the scale that determines whether or not um, you're going to have or what what tool you're going to use to make it so we can go with a smaller scale I just do with the subtract again with one and you can see how small it is we'll go in like this that's the smallest size that you can pretty much get with the mask tool now if I was to bring uh, these down to be even smaller you'll notice that the river is still still a decent decent size we'll bring it down I'll show the scale just so you can kind of see what it looks like when I bring the scale down now if you're making a very 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 small very very small um, scale and you're bringing it down quite a bit that size might be even too big okay so the smaller you get the more and more you might want to consider using a different tool like maybe the path tool so it's up to you oh the battle maps are awesome fledgling game gamer love making battle maps so much fun but i'm glad that you were able to make some world maps as well the tool is very versatile you can make lots of maps lots of different things with it okay so let's go ahead and break down a little bit with using the path tool instead if this is just way too big for you you can totally use the path path tool and i'll show you how to do that as well let's go ahead and just fill this back in and we're going to use the path tool real quick okay so with the path tool and you want to make a river you're going to make sure that it's a flat line let's go ahead and put a path down so you can see as i'm editing it uh there are a lot of different ways to go about it me i'm just going to go with a very simple one i'm just going to use blue uh, for no shadow whatsoever I'm gonna go with the color make it blue let's go ahead and bring it down real quick uh, I'm gonna make it match maybe around that same color so maybe a little bit darker uh, I think that right there looks just fine it doesn't have to be perfect I'm just bringing it similar to that color go ahead and select the path you're gonna change that blend mode to hue like this and you'll notice that being closer the path kind of disappears into the ocean right but it stays on the land right so there you have then you can also bring that width way 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 down i'm going to bring the opacity all the way up but see you can get it to be very 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 small and now what's also very cool about the hue is that if you make another path that connects into it it's going to blend right into it you see that it blends in just fine doesn't create overlap in any way so very 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 easy way to do your rivers and easy you can edit it too. make it larger by just adding more and more paths to it if you want to make it wider you want to make more meandering you want to make an oxbow lake entirely up to you so pretty cool if you want to do that just know that if you do shadows I think if you do do shadows it might have an effect so let's just take a look I'm gonna verify that real quick let me add in uh, maybe a, a light yellow shadow just to see what that looks like uh, make it a little bit darker here there we go I'm just wondering how that looks I'm gonna apply a path over it I just want to make sure that yeah it does look like you can they do intersect a little bit because of the shadow so just keep in mind that if you have a shadow on it that technique might not work so totally up to you okay sweet all right really the concept remains the same in my opinion for parchment world here go ahead and create you have your mountain range you have um 
you have a mountain range and it starts there it goes up to the ocean okay so we finished that's pretty much all that with fantasy regional your river might be a little bit wider i'm just going to do that one real quick because parchment and uh fantasy world are really the same in their mechanics so let's go to uh, the next one in fantasy regional hd now with fantasy regional hd and it's a more scaled up a little bit bigger you can have a wider part of your river and when the river is wider you can put more details on it right so let's go ahead and make a real quick regional scene uh, and i'll go ahead and put a river on there and for this one i don't recommend using the path tool you can just go ahead and use the mask tool for that so let's go in throw in uh, you know that looks let's not do a mountain let's go ahead instead um, take the cliff stamps and I know some people are always curious about how I do my cliffs and stuff, so this is will be really helpful. Real quick here. Right. Oop, whoa. Is it working? I don't know. There is the lag. What is happening? <laughs> my mouse, it won't move. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right, that was awkward. Come on now, you can do it. Cliffs, there we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's just getting wiggy now. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and put some cliffs together. And uh, if you're gonna do cliffs along your river, I recommend you do a lot of the cliffs first because it's actually a little bit easier to do the river along the cliff. So if you're going to do a river uh, where you're gonna have zoomed in with the cliffs, I recommend the cliffs first. You can make a little guide if you want. So I'll go ahead and just use a path to represent a guide of your of your uh, river go ahead and do that real quick we'll change it to normal there we go so i have a little guide here this is kind of helpful just a little bit and that way you can kind of do use it as a you know a little bit of a reference for yourself it's always nice to um before you lay down your river it's nice to make a path first to kind of get the right curve that you want the s curves in the meandering if you start right off the bat with using a path or the mask tool you might make a mistake and then you might have to do it all over again but if you have the path guide there you can just follow the path guide out to the ocean so it's a little bit easier that way that way you don't have to keep doing it over and over again until you get it right you'll only have to do the path and that makes it so much easier than add mode subtract mode add mode subtract mode or add a path delete add a path delete drive you crazy so just do a couple practices first to get the right curve and the right length that you want and then you can go over it with the mask tool okay so i'll go ahead now and just continue adding on uh, those cliffs and we'll make a fairly wide river so that way i can put some details in it okay Let's do, do, do oh, okay, let's go over here. There we go, right there, that looks good. We'll add one more right here. One more right here. Okay. We're gonna get some details in here. It's nice to have a little bit, you know? Okay, there we go. All right, and now I think I can go in, oopsie, sorry about that loud noise. Ow! <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> Let me just make sure that I have the subtract. Make sure I have this right. There we go. All right. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and make the first. Oopsie. I'm going to delete that uh, that path now. I don't actually need it. It was just a guide for the cliffs. Oof. Also, I would love to do a full on stream on how to make fantasy, how to make regional maps with some detail. So uh, that would be a really, really cool stream. I'll make sure to do that. Okay. Let's go ahead and we'll start with the center. Really, start with the center of it. This way, there we go. All right. Dun, dun. Rivers, we're doing rivers, folks. All right, and I can go ahead and make it a little bit wider. I want to make it wide enough to where I can put some details in there. Now, I'll also show you a little trick about, let's say that you want uh, a cliff to be behind to be in front of the river right how would you how would you portray that right well just go right along the cliff like this and don't go don't touch the edge 
like this, and then you'll have this illusion that there is depth. So again, you can also just go along the edge right here, push that out, and it will look like the cliff is actually in front. And you might want to turn off your mask effects for that. You'll see here now it looks like the river is behind that cliff, like it's popping out. That's always nice to add in if you want to put a little bit of depth in there. That's always kind of nice. So I'll go ahead and finish up uh, the river part, and then we'll talk about like what is it to, how is it that you should decorate rivers when they're a little bit more up close? How are we going to do that? I'll show you that. It's going to be fun. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. If people have any questions, feel free to ask. Make it kind of pertaining to rivers a little bit. <laughs> Okay, not the best meandering, but my not my best meandering jaw, I'd say. You failed, failed, Matthew. <laughs> there we go. Make it a little bit lighter here. Sweet. All right, we're good now. All right, got a little river there. That's always kind of nice to have that in there. All right. Okay, so just remember that trick. If you want to show uh, depth, just make sure the mask tool stops at the cliff line work, and that way it'll look like it's protruding out. That's really the trick. Like if you wanted to have, uh, you know, let's say that you wanted to make uh, some kind of river island or something, then you would just use the, uh, the mask tool to kind of make it. So let's say that you wanted to have uh, maybe a river island right here, like this, and then we can put some... Uh, we can put some, we're going to go ahead and paint, we'll paint some depth in there, we'll maybe play with some blend modes and stamps to kind of give it a feel like things are underwater. So we'll do that. Now with, I, let's talk a little bit about like understanding a little bit about how muddy a water, water is and when you can see inside of it. So during the rainy seasons, uh, there's a lot of mudslides, water, especially in, you know, both I think it's, um, what is the name of it? I forgot the name of it. Uh, temperate forests, temperate rainforests, where I live in Oregon. There's a lot of mudslides from rainfall. It erodes, and then it pushes all that erosion, all that mud, that dirt, and rock, and it pushes it into the river, okay? Once that happens, it really muddies the waters, right? So it's kind of actually hard to see. So the time of the year can determine whether what the visibility is of your water. Rainy season, lots of sediment. It's going to be a little muddy, going to be a bit dark, going to be hard to see, kind of murky, right? If it's maybe in the summertime, not as much rain, the sediment has mostly settled, pushed further down out towards the ocean and or rest on the bottom of the riverbed, then that water begins to get a little bit more crystal clear, a little easier to see, and you can see things down in the river, okay? Just a little bit about understanding about water visibility and depending on the season. So if maybe you had a winter map and your river was um, maybe still flowing, it's not cold enough for the water to completely freeze on that river, then maybe you want to consider making your water a little bit murkier, a little bit darker, harder to see in there, okay? All right, so a couple steps. Once you've, one nice thing about cliffs once you've added cliffs, you can decide whether or not you want to add what's called a sandbar or a rock bar. Okay, so let's make a sandbar. And I can use the cliffs and the edge of the water, the edge of the river, as kind of a guide on where I'm going to be putting those sandbars. Okay, so I'll go ahead and make get rid of my custom assets here. I'm going to pick uh, maybe sand plane will work. We'll see. Oh, wait a minute. This is fantasy regional. My bad. Naughty, naughty. Or fancy regional HD. Let's stick with the proper ones, shall we, Mati? <laughs> I'm gonna use the edgy brush because the edgy brush is super cool. I really, really like it. It's great for doing kind of details. It does a lot of kind of interesting patterns and it's great for texturing, no matter what you're doing for a battle map, fantasy regional, very, very helpful, okay? So let's make a sandbar. All right, I'm gonna choose right here. I think if I remember correctly, a sandbar is when the sediment pushes and then the harder sediment uh, breaks down. I can't remember, I don't think I prepped this section, but if someone knows about 
why there's a sandbar on which part of the bend, please let me know. That's supposed to be my job. But hey, I'm passing the buck on to you, okay? Because <laughs> I forgot to prep that part. Smarty pants. <laughs> okay, so one thing with the edgy brush is that you're probably going to want to drop the opacity down quite a bit, especially if you're doing with lighter textures against darker textures. It's really going to pop out. So here it is at two, and you'll see right away that it's quite visible, right? I'm going to go ahead and undo that. I'm going to change my size down. Now, the one thing you should know when you're doing painting with the edgy brush, it has a propensity to kind of go outside uh, and go out a little bit, like you'll see it go over, okay? So you just have to be careful to make sure that you don't uh, touch the line work along the edge of your cliffs. Now you can if you want, it's up to you, but I'm gonna go ahead and make this sandbar. I'm gonna start with one stroke first all along the edge and kind of make the whole area that I want Mostly on the inside turn. Thank you, by the way. I appreciate that. Wonderful. That's what I thought I remembered, but I wanted to make sure, you know, I didn't want to talk like, talk out of my butt because, you know, that does happen sometimes. If I don't know, I don't want to like pretend that I do when I don't. <laughs> if I don't, I'm going to be honest with you, okay? <laughs> All right. All right. So now you do a couple strokes, okay? Once you've done those couple of strokes to kind of give some definition to the area of where it is, you can go in with some smaller strokes and go on the edge and just start doing some dots like this, single click dots along this entire edge, just to get it to be much brighter along this edge. Okay, you want it to be the most brightest part, it's probably gonna be along your edge here as you would expect. Now don't just do that edge as well, you see that there's a line right here, single click a little bit further out, and you'll really get some nice texturing that will really be kind of helpful with blending between the sandbar and the cliff base. Okay, so kind of some interesting shapes there, right? Kind of interesting the way that edgy brush really, really kind of helps. It's going to be on the inside bend, for those of you who know, that's where your sandbars are, okay? But I just want to show you what a sandbar will kind of look like. The edgy brush is fantastic for texturing. I've been playing with it so much. So I'm very, very excited to kind of showcase a little bit of that in this stream. And maybe we can go into uh, more detail in another stream with that. Let's also make this river island. Let's maybe put a tree on there to kind of explain like why that hasn't completely been um, destroyed through erosion. So we'll go fantasy regional. We'll add in a couple trees there. Let's see here, what do we want? We'll throw in some tree, let's type in the tree in the search bar. There we go, we throw a tree down. Let's put one right there, another one right here. So a smaller one right here, maybe another one a little bit smaller down here. There we go, okay. Well, now we know why that, that river island is there. If you got that root system kind of holding it together, it hasn't completely eroded away. So not yet at least, <laughs> not yet at least, right? Okay, now since I've already added some trees on this river island, it's, why don't we add some trees around? I always mention this in all, my, all of my stuff. Always make sure that you overlap. So I have a tree overlapping the cliff, overlapping the water. That's going to create a sense of depth. So when it comes to decorating your river, make sure you throw some trees in. Have them overlap. It's going to be the same thing in top down as well. Have some trees overlapping. That's going to look real, real nice. So. And every river is different. Some rivers maybe not have a lot, of, maybe not have a lot of trees close to its bank, maybe farther out. It just depends, okay, on how you want to do it. Hey, dragons, dreams, and squirrels, welcome, welcome, welcome. Boop, boop. Back from being sick all week. Yikes! I can relate to that. I've been a little icky, icky myself. <laughs> not fun. I can assure you. <laughs> Let's maybe make a rock bar. Uh, let's do that. Now, I don't know, I'm not even sure which one to use as a rock bar. Hmm. Let's see here. Probably a gray, but I'd also want to throw in, like, maybe some kind of speckled texture. So we'll go with kind of maybe this darker gray for right now. I'll use that maybe as the base. Let's make a rock bar. A rock bar? Let me see here. Let's put one. Let's put one right here instead. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and apply it real quick just to see what it looks like. Thank you. Oh, I'm glad you're feeling better. That is just no fun feeling sick. Oh, let's bring up the opacity a little bit. 
There we go. I'm going to start with a darker. I'm going to start with a darker uh, gray first. Okay. The reason why that is is because when it comes to layering both textures and stamps, the way that I like to do my layering when it comes to light and dark is if I have um, some stone on the ground, I'm going to apply a darker version of that. And then to show the highlights of the stone, I'll make a brighter version of that texture to show the highlights. So I'm going to show you that trick. So here I've got this darker kind of grayer uh, texture here. You'll notice this. So we'll just go ahead and apply this dark gray. Let's do some single clicks as well out here to kind of show this gray here. All right, so it's kind of dark right here on this edge here. Let's take that same texture right now and let's go ahead and bring up the brightness just a bit. So we'll go in, go to filters, boost the brightness up, okay? Now when I apply it, you'll notice that it's gonna be a bit brighter, okay? Let's make it just a little bit more brighter than that, go with 35. And I'm just gonna do single clicks. Let's make it a little bit brighter along the edge first, I think should look kind of nice. There we go, having a couple jut out like that. There you go. Now you can go in and single clicks like this and you can have these kind of representing stones because it kind of has that kind of look to it right there you go and if you're not satisfied with that you can always throw down an alpha texture and an alpha texture is a texture that supports is is going to have a transparency behind it and there are a couple things that you can use for that so let's maybe go into uh, a different style and i'll look up rocks let me just go with select all real quick. I'm going to type in rock or gravel or something like that. Let's put in some elements besides just the fractals that you get from the edgy brush. Let's also throw in some darker elements so that that sandbar looks like it has some darker rocks in there. Now I think there should be, let me type in rock real quick. We'll see. Okay, there is some rock in there. Uh, let's go actually with watercolor. Uh, battle maps, maybe it's there. I'm gonna go and try to find this gravel texture. There it is, grava, gravel, alpha. Let's go with that one, okay? Now, just so you know, some textures work well, some textures not in a style work well, and some don't. So you be very careful about your experimentings. You know, uh, I think that blending textures from different styles works really well, but it doesn't always work so well when it comes to stamps, just a little caveat there. Let's also change uh, the size. So make it a little bit smaller so I can see it. I can see the artifacts better. That looks great. And then we'll just go in uh, to, and just put it at full opacity so you can kind of really see it. And I'll go in like this and just apply. And it's gonna put uh, a little bit of dirt and kind of gravel on the ground there. We can go in and rotate it again to get even more. Just rotate it. So you can get a little bit more. Go ahead and just rotate it again. Get a little bit more. There you go. And now you have kind of more, some more rock, rockish looking pieces in there. So up to you how you want to go about it, okay? Sweet. All right. So kind of a rock bar, sand bar, and in the fantasy regional style. And of course, you can decorate any way that you wish. Uh, you can have your cliffs you can push your river all the way against the cliffs to where there's just no shore right here you can do that too up to you super fun stuff the last thing that i want to show real quick uh with uh the fantasy regional and is putting down a bridge because i know that some people are like well how would you do a bridge right going across the river P very popular thing to make in battle maps and if you're scenes regional maps as well so i'll go ahead and put a bridge down and there's some caveats when it comes to putting bridges down in general, and that is that you're kind of limited by the uh, the directions of each stamp. Okay, so I, this section right here looks this looks probably the nicest spot to really put down your bridge because it's nice and set up there. But we can go and put some other ones as well. So there's this angle as well, but there's no um, there's no cliff to rest it against. So it might not work there. Uh, you could try up here. Uh, this part right here has a cliff right here, and you could just move the cliffs around up to you. So just make sure that you factor in uh, your cliffs and where the bridge connects to them. 
and what kind of bridge you're using because there's a couple of them. This one has some cur some slant at the edge of each one. Some of them don't have that. There are other bridges that are just flat wooden bridges that don't have a lot of uh, curve to the edge. So you can go ahead and boost up the size here and you'll notice that uh, you don't need those ridges. You don't need um, cliffs to actually put your bridges down. Okay, you can just rotate them to where they work best for you. Up to you how you wanna go about doing that, okay? So just a little something about bridges, all right? Also notice that these two corners over here, sorry about that, these edges right here, that is huge and not helpful. There you go. <laughs> You'll see these edges right here. Make sure that um, they're resting on land, right? So the flow of the water goes underneath the arch, okay? Just keep that in mind when you are doing your river bits with your bridges, okay? River bits. We're talking about river bits, all right? Yeah, who doesn't like river bits? All right. Any questions so far? Hope that's helpful. And of course, uh, make sure that you, you know, make a little bit of a road. Uh, put, you can make a little bit of a road that gets built so we can go back to Fantasy Regional real quick. I'll throw down a, throw down a road. Yes, I love bridges. And then I like burning them behind me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, burn them behind me. Burn them. <laughs> Who doesn't like river bits? I love me the river bits, let me tell you. Okay, so with I'm gonna use a road texture. I'm gonna boost the size up so that you can kind of see the texture. And I'm using this one because it doesn't have a specific direction to it. Let me zoom in real quick. You see how it's cobbled and there's no real direction to it? So look what happens when we use the other one. Real quick, let me show you. As soon as my machine decides to operate properly. Do dirty, dirty machine in your internets. All right, let's go look up pavement here. No, no, I don't want that, go away. Go away, I didn't say only for textures. Why you do that? Okay, this other pavement texture right here, let me zoom in, you can see it. You see the brick is uh, directional. So you'll have to, you'll, you would have to kind of like rotate or use a minimal amount of this texture to make your road because of the direction. So I definitely recommend instead uh, the other pavement one works much better. Pavement two, not pavement one, okay? And I am going to use that edgy brush because the edgy brush is mwah, creme de la creme. Bring the uh, size down, of course, and just kind of do a single stroke at first. You know, just kind of going what you want. And I'm, and of course, you're going to probably use the negative space to make that road bits. Okay, use that negative space since one direction. Like, why would you have the road go back down this way because you came that way, right? So make sure the road kind of goes in the other direction. So you have a A to B kind of direction, right? Next, what I like to do is blend in the bridge. So I add a lot of the uh, that texture at where the bridge ends or where it connects, okay? Because it's gonna create a little bit more transition. You would expect a little bit more brick right there, right? So let's go ahead and put a little bit more brick along those bridges. Bom, 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 breaking those bridges. I'm gonna break it, break, break. All right, do some single clicks in here. Kind of create this kind of scattered road look. And then I'll probably delete certain sections or paint over certain sections because the river or the, the river, yeah, that's a river. We're making the pavement river, everyone. The river made of pavement. Yes, I love pavement rivers. They are exciting. Absolutely. Why am I talking with an accent? I don't understand. What is happening here? Who has taken over the tea? <laughs> the brain control, it's kicking in. <laughs> okay, let's also go back in with that same texture. I'm just gonna remove some sections. So what I'll do is just go in and just get rid of that section right there. Maybe get rid of a section there. And it kind of gives it a more worn and realistic feel to it. Hey, Krasnitova. Love that name, awesome, welcome. <laughs> I love that icon. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> oh, well, let's see here. One thing you can also do, I noticed that the texture is a little bit darker, that stone. So what might be helpful to create even more, because look at this right here. It doesn't really blend that well, right? I'm noticing that. So what happens if I maybe bring the brightness down just a bit to kind of match maybe the same brightness here? Let me try that real quick. Let me just apply it. Uno momento, here we go. There we go, oh, there we go. Yeah, that's a little bit better, I think. 
Yeah, there we go. A little bit better in the blending, I say. There we go. Nice. We can bring the opacity down. Go ahead and throw that in there. There we go. Just a little bit more blending, you know? Come on now. Just a little bit more blending. There we go. All right. And of course, you can go back in uh, with the lighter color to make the highlights in the stone. So I broke my rules here and did the, the light part, the light bits first. Got a little carried away now, didn't I? Naughty thing, you. All right. Go ahead and bring in the larger bits and throw in some small ones like this. There we go. <laughs> Naughty thing getting carried away. Yeah, that's what I do, folks. I get just, I don't know, just a little bit, you know? <laughs> just, just, a, just a tad. I'm gonna do one last thing. I know I'm kind of stepping away from rivers a little bit, but bridges are very popular when it comes to uh, maps, both regional and of course battle map. And we can make uh, a battle map bridge over a river as well. So let's continue with this segment real quick. We're also gonna paint the water. What I always really, really, really like to do is to always put, um, to line my roads with a little bit of grass. Um, now that, when knowing when to add grass along your road really depends on what map it is. Obviously, if you're in the heart of a city, you're probably not going to have a lot of grass patches on your street. It's cobbled, well-maintained, hopefully, and uh, you don't have to worry about that. But if you're out in the middle of bumfart nowhere and there's not much maintenance to this road, well, <laughs> you're probably... And it's probably going to be a little bit of uh, <laughs> nature taking, back over, taking it over, all right? So you kind of expect that, right? So I'll just go ahead and throw in some grass. Whenever I use stamps, and I'm gonna put down a lot of them, I like to do, uh, I have a certain method. I like to start with a larger segment first. So I have a couple large segments, and I'm gonna mostly put them uh, where the road is. So I'll put some larger ones in here. One, two, Let's put them over here, a larger one here, 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 here. Just put them over by the by the road bits, okay? Yes. Release the river. Yeah. Okay, there we go. And then I'm gonna bring it down to another size, so like a medium size. Let's go with maybe size 20. I think that works good. And I'm just gonna put a couple next to the larger, the larger sections like this. There we go. All right. Have, uh, put some there, there, there. We'll make sure to put a couple up here. Make sure you cluster a couple of them. I really like to use threes, kind of the rule of three here. Put three of them together. I really like doing that. I just think it looks interesting to use the little clusters of three. All right, all right, there we go. Looking spicy good. All right, a couple more on here. All right. So many changes and no saves. This is making me very uncomfortable, Mati. I demand you save immediately. I concur. Absolutely. All right, let's go ahead and save real quick, and I'll refresh the page. Always nice to save. Save after a certain number of changes, especially if you're experiencing the lag. We apologize, but you are experiencing lag at this time. Please remain seated. All right. Let's do this. We're going to save, refresh the page, and we're going to keep going. Don't stop now. Keep it going. Keep it going. River bridges. Yes. Great place for battle scenes. You now you get to kick your opponent into the river, and then they're vulnerable, and then someone could stick an arrow in their head. So, yeah, I mean, much more exciting, you know, to do that. Yeah. I mean, come on. Super cool. I like it, man. Rivers are awesome. You get to work with water, get to work with land, but you can also be kicked into the water and also find an arrow in the back of your head. So just keep that in mind, okay? <gasps> the dreaded blue screen. <laughs> Yikes. That is a no bueno. Okay. I'm just gonna refresh the page. I'm going to refresh the page. <laughs> I'm seeming, my mouth is experiencing uh, a malfunction right now. Yeah, that happens to me. I, you know, 
the brain sh the brain chip that's been installed in my brain it starts circuits once in a while after looking at a screen for like maybe about 30 minutes and then it starts to really just <laughs> really just starts to <clears throat> so you just got to watch out for that okay step away from your computer once in a while okay <laughs> all right here we go okay but so i'll go ahead and finish so the next step then obviously uh, after you've done that is to go ahead and just bring it down to the smallest size and just again throw them around like this you have these smaller ones and it really gives a little bit more i think more natural feel to it uh you know not all bushes and trees are are exactly the same size there's a whole bunch of variety and so go ahead and make sure just to do that kind of method of large medium small when you're putting down trees grass things like that it really gives it a more natural feel to it so just kind of keep that in mind all right go ahead and throw that in here we got lots of time left so i will do just a little bit more in here maybe we want to throw a little bit of grass in and the beautiful thing with the edgy brush is the edgy brush is just perfect for that so i will go in and choose uh fantasy oh not world what am i doing naughty naughty unacceptable there we go. Oh my goodness. Did I have enough coffee this morning? I don't know. I did have a rough night's sleep. <laughs> there we go. I think I did it this time. It, it took me to select and deselect three packs to finally get there. What a journey. Everybody, thank you so much. <laughs> Again, gonna want to use that edgy brush because the edgy brush is mwah, muy bueno. Fantastic. Uh, let's go ahead and bring the edge size down maybe. My computer, yeah, it. I uh, just it's gonna pour it right there on the keyboard. That keyboard's gonna be like, mm. Miss your owner, I am now awake. Thank you. Bzz, bzz, bzz. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and throw down a little bit of grass here. So just do one stroke and make a little area. What's really nice is you don't have to have um, the whole area be grassy. So just like, just think about layers. Just think for you Minecraft nerds out there like myself, you know, you know, think of layers. Whenever I'm making my foreground, I like to put dirt down first, right? As you would expect, right? Then you can put grass and other things on top of it. Okay. And that applies also to my world maps. I always make all my land shapes, my land mass uh, colors. I always have them just be dirt. Okay, some areas differ, but if you start with dirt first, then you can paint sand, grass, whatever it is, on top of the dirt. And yet you still get to keep, you still have dirt, as you would expect, in certain areas. So that's kind of a little trick when it comes to uh, painting. Just think the Minecraft technique. Start with the dirt first, and then move on to your other textures on top. Sand, grass, um, maybe clay hardened earth, different types, okay? So now when you've done that first kind of pass, let me do over here as well. When you do that first, after you do that first pass, it's a raiding party! God mood! Burn! Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, throw in my grass here. Okay, so now that you've done that, what's up, welcome. So now that you've done that, you can go in into the center of those grassy areas and you can just apply it to make it a little bit uh, brighter in those segments. Uh, if not, if it's not bright enough, then you can inc just increase the brightness. Da, 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 beautiful bridge. Thank you, God mode. Welcome. Yeah. So I'm actually, this is not very bright, I'm noticing, and that's okay. So we've applied those first kind of strokes to give those areas that greenish color let's go to advanced settings boost the brightness bring it up bring the side bring the opacity down a little bit smaller size and now i can go in into the center where these grassy areas are and create the highlight of a of the center okay so i'll go in let's add a little bit more actually a little bit more and then single click as you go away okay let's go back over here just right in the center bits like this. First time chatter, welcome, Sun Winterfeld. Welcome, welcome. Hi, 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 purple flames. I love it, love it. So many peeps, I'm enjoying it. Welcome everybody, I am so glad you're here. 
begins the writing party. Grabs the loot. Okay. So use that darker, use a darker variation of the grass, then just throw a lighter variation with HSBC to create the highlights of your grass. It's really, really as simple as that. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I'm at 144 changes. You can also add darker greens to show areas where water collected. Absolutely. Beautiful. Love it. Thank you, Cyberwolf. Cyberwolf, ah, your comments bring joy, small tears of joy to my eyes, and I feel love. Thank you so much. Love it when people yeah, speak up, folks. Give me your knowledge so that I may incorporate it into my own. Yes, give me your knowledge. Suck it out of your brain. It's mine now. Yes. Resistance is futile. Okay. All right. Next part. Hey, let's do the river part and how you paint your rivers. Yay, we're getting back to the river part. Yippee! <laughs> it is a river stream. Last time I checked. So let's get to that, all right? Oh, real quick. I always do this. When it comes to your bridge, you'll notice that it looks kind of odd right here, just this straight line that kind of goes over this. So I'll show you a real trick when it comes to fixing uh, segments, segments like this. You'll kind of notice that it looks really bizarre like that. Easy fix. Just hide it, okay? Hiding is not hard. Just throw a couple bushes, trees, whatever, right in front of it. Like that. And that's it. That's as simple as it gets. Just, just hide it, okay? Whether it's with a bush, a tree, whatever the fudge muffins you want it to be, up to you, okay? So, um, <clears throat> and fudge muffins are delicious, just so you know. And then uh, you just, uh, you know, throw in a little bit more grass here to kind of hide the rest of it if you want, like that. Oopsie, it's right on a cliff there. Well, that's some strange grass right there. Maybe rotated like this, maybe? There we go. <laughs> Much better. All right, so just adding some trees or bushes or whatever to kind of hide that works for me every time. So you know what? Cheat. I am encouraging you to cheat. Hide it. <laughs> I'm a bad influence, I swear, but it's for the common good, I promise. <laughs> All right, so you got that You got that bridge there. Nice, nice. Boom, boom. All right, that's just, just so you can hide those strange lines. Yeah, it's like, whoa, that's weird. Why, why, what happened? Okay, so... Let's go ahead and paint the inside, the river. So really, let's just talk about depth and how is it that you kind of portray that. So I'll go back in. Let me find the right texture, I believe. BG, let me just make sure. Oh, that looks lighter. Let's go with, do I have the right texture? Was it water? I don't know. Uh, maybe this is the one, let me check. Oh, whoa, that's a yellow texture? Wow, that's some really weird water, man. What's been going on with this water? What happened? What is this? What is this? There we go. That'll work just fine. Okay, so let's talk about uh, how to portray depth in water, okay? And this applies to your oceans, lakes as well. The deeper a water is, the darker, less visible, and the less because it takes longer for sunlight to penetrate to get down to the bottom. So Depth is really portrayed in water by how dark the water is. So the darker the water is, the deeper it is. The lighter the water, the shallower it is, okay? So I'll go ahead and show that real quick. Now, if you're not putting anything inside your river, like if you wanted to show like grass, sandbars underneath, you can do all that stuff, but let's stick with the basic stuff first. And that is, I'm gonna have to go ahead and take a circle brush, make sure the softness is all the way up. And in the center, which is where you kind of expect the deepest part of the water to be, uh, you're going to go ahead and apply the texture. Let me go filters real quick and bring the brightness down even more. One second. There we go. All right. And we'll just go ahead and apply this at the center like this. It's kind of the basic part. It's just in the center where you would kind of expect uh, uh, the deeper parts to be. Okay. And you can go in as well and do single clicks if you want to remove the strange line that you kind of see, all right, like this. All right, go ahead and go in the center here. Kind of get some, a little bit darker water here. Single clicks are just the, one of the best ways for blending, uh, okay? Because if you make a, just make a main blob 
and then just single click around those edges to create kind of a, I don't think diffuse is the right word. I'm not sure what the artistic term would be, but kind of blends it uh, a little bit. So kind of remember that dot technique to help you out there. So then the next step is shallower raw water, right? So with that one, there are a couple options. You can use mask effects to do all that stuff if you want. So if we want, we can go in here like this, go to advanced settings. We're going to enable everything, but turn everything off as well first. So we'll go ahead and let that pop up. One moment, please. And all right. So you have right here, uh, some outer shadows. You can increase uh, the outer shadow out a little bit to make it show that there's some shallower water there if you wish. We'll let that build up. Let me just step out real quick to make sure that looks right. Yep, I think that works just fine. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I also removed the stroke line, so there is no stroke line at all, but you can add one if you wish. Totally up to you. See what happens when I add in a stroke line here, especially a black one. Give it a second to load. There we go. So this is what it looks like when you kind of add a black stroke to it, making it even pop out even more. Me personally, I don't actually really like to add a black stroke. I prefer just to um, turn the stroke off and then I can kind of blend from there. So it's up to you how you want to go about it. There's a lot of different ways to portray, to portray, protrude, portray um, <clears throat> depth in water when it comes to texturing or just using the mask effects. It might be easier to use a mask effect because otherwise you'd have to paint that white line along the edge of your rivers and including the edge of that island, those shores along the island there. So mask effects would work better in this scenario, but you still have to paint your deeper parts a little bit with a darker texture in the center. So just kind of keep that in mind. What happens if you want to have, let's say you want to show something of an underwater, you can totally do that. The blend mode luminosity is for that. So if I go ahead and pick like maybe some grass and I choose luminosity blend mode, you're going to notice it's going to pick up whatever texture uh, is behind the stamp. So it's on that, whatever's on that layer. So you'll see I got blue. Let's say I put it in front of here. It's going to be gray. Put it in front of this one. It's going to be green, brown. Okay. So just factor that in. You don't obviously want your grass to overlap. You want to keep it in the river to maintain that, that blue. So let's keep it, push it down a layer. Real quick, I'm gonna put a couple along. Uh, I'm gonna put a couple along here like this. And wherever there's grass along here, I'll probably put some here. So let's do that first. I'm gonna throw it down, real quick. And another thing that you might want to consider doing, of course, is going to your advanced settings and changing your contrast. That's gonna remove some of your line work, and you might want to bring the brightness down a little bit as well. Just depends. It's on your scenario. Okay, so I'll maybe I'll apply a couple underwater like this. You have some underwater like that. Let's put a couple along this edge and then we'll put some grass on the outside too because the grass is growing down the slope going into uh, the river. Okay, so if you put some in the water, make sure you maybe you put some on the land as well to kind of correspond. And of course, remember that technique. Always remember to put in variation of size. So throw in a couple smaller ones. I'll do that same thing up here like this, some smaller ones right there along that ledge. And then you'll just go over here, select the grass right here so you have the same settings. And I'll put some grass along this ledge. Oopsie, it's set to the luminosity blend mode. Now that is a naughty naughty. There we go. <laughs> All right, so it kind of corresponds to the grass on the land and the grass in the water. Okay, so we'll throw in a couple in here like this. If you got any questions, feel free to ask. Do not be shy. Oopsie. Those are still at luminosity blend mode. Now my mind is perplexed. What is happening? What is happening? I didn't smoke anything. What is happening? <laughs> okay. Let's make sure that it's at the right blend mode this time. I want it normal. It's happening. There we go. We'll throw in that lighter grass there. Not casuals. Is this Mati? I'm sure if I made a typo in your name. Just one T, but this is Mati. I am indeed Mati. That's me. <laughs> How's it going? Welcome, not casuals. Not casuals. Welcome, welcome. Glad that you're here. By the way, go ahead and fix that blend mode. Don't worry about the misspellings. That's not a big deal in the slightest bit. I don't mind. 
Okay, so you'll see that the grass right here corresponds to the grass in the water. And it's going to be the same thing if you use rocks, if you use a log, whatever. So let me real quick show you a technique to have something half in the water and half out of the water. Let's do that. Let's try that. So now when it comes to this, you might have to use uh, stamps from a different style. I don't think we have logs in Fantasy Regional. It's probably going to be in Fat Fantasy Battle Maps 2.0. You sometimes make maps for other users for a commission. I'm curious. I don't actually. Uh, I'm just way too busy with Incarnate, though that's cool. And by the way, I can direct you if you're looking for people to make your maps. There are a lot of really good artists out there, really, really good ones in our community. Go ahead and direct yourself. I'll direct you to the Discord server we have. Join yourself up. Make sure you go into the hashtag roles channel. Click Incarnator Role so you can see all of the um, all of the channels. Look up uh, Map Artist for Hire. Go right in there and go ahead and tell them what you're looking for. Believe me, there's a lot of good artists on our Discord. I mean, a lot. So trust me, you're probably going to have um, you're probably going to find someone that's going to be able to help you out. I'm sorry that I'm not able to, though I do love making maps. <laughs> so I'm going to type in a log, I think. Let me just type that in here. Put in the log. There we go. Okay. So let's say that you want to put a, a log or a tree uh, that's kind of half in the water and half out. I'll show you that trick. Okay. Let's turn off uh, the shadows, I think, real quick object. Take the shadow off. Now, unfortunately, this is going to be affect your stamp shadows will be affect your uh, mask effects are going to be affected by this. So I'll go ahead and throw down a log like this. So one, I'll throw it down. You're going to first uh, let's do the first one. That's going to be uh, that's going to be in the water. So I'm going to change the luminosity. So this is going to be underwater. Drop that contrast down and maybe drop the brightness down a little bit as well. Okay. Now you're going to, let's also even drop the opacity down, okay? You're going to flatten it to the BG layer because this is the underwater part, okay? You'll notice that, right? Now we're gonna throw down uh, a, that same log, line it back up, I'm gonna turn off that shadow again, my mistake, turn the opacity all the way up. Oh, we'll change the brightness, the contrast, let's uh, a little bit darker. There we go. And then you're going to take that one and flatten to the FG. Now you'll notice that there's a stroke line there. Don't worry about that. That's okay. Remember what I said? Cheat and hide it. Okay? Cheat and hide it. So now you're going to go in, type in vine like this. And you can go in and just put a vine right on top of it, just like that. You might have to change the scale. You might have to change the shadow a little bit, but just hide it. That's really as simple as it is. Just just hide it. That's it. Boom. Half in the water, half out. And of course, make sure that you overlap things, all right? If you're going to have a log like that, have some grass growing in front of it, have some grass growing behind it, stuff like that to kind of give it a little bit more character. Because the trick to depth is to always use uh, the, is to use an overlapping technique. That's the trick. Overlapping creates depth. So if you really want to show that, overlap your stamp so that way it's very, very clear that there's some nice depth in there. And that's always nice to add into your maps, okay? All right. Let's take a step back and see how that looks. So you've got that technique right there. So what about showing uh, direction in a river? How is it that you portray direction? Well, the way to go about that, there are a couple things. One, you're going to want to show perhaps waves or lines that show direction. So there are a couple methods to do about this. You can paint it. You could use waves, uh, wave stamps. Uh, you could use um, paths. It's up to you. Whatever is the simplest way for you. Let's just go over that real quick and I'll show you. So the first step, obviously, is you can just paint it if you want. My suggestion to you would be to use... Uh, some continuity in the style. So if you have these white edges right here, maybe you want to create white. Um, so uh, let's use this. You want to show the lines of movement. I like to use this snow texture from uh, the fantasy regional style. Okay. We're going to bring the opacity down. 50% should be fine. Let's go to two real quick. 
set to BG layer. I'm just going to apply real quick to see what it looks like. There we go. Now, what's nice about this is it doesn't create a perfect straight line. You'll notice that uh, there are breaks in the line because the texture isn't pure white. It's just got white artifacts. So it's perfect for creating the um, <clears throat> the flow of water. Okay, so we'll do that real quick. So I'm going to create a couple flow lines and I'm going to put them for now along my edges. So I'll put one here, stop right there, put another one here, and we're just going to put in the, so you're going to emanate out. So start with the ones closest to the edge. Okay. And then from there you can go farther out and don't forget to also change the opacity. So you have different um, widths and different uh, sizes of those marks for your flow. Okay. So I'll start with the first ones. And you're going to expect the flow to probably be most visible against things of resistance. So if there's a river island, you're probably going to see some more flow going around as it's resisting against the island. Okay, same thing with the edge here. You're creating the flow lines along your edge. Okay, so let me just add those real quick with the current opacity and then we'll put smaller ones. Okay, now once you've added all those lines in there, now you can drop the opacity down even more maybe bring your size down to one and maybe start putting in your lines in the center with a smaller opacity. And of course, some different widths in the line kind of give it a little bit more character and a little bit more realism. Okay, because if it's all the same width, the same line width, it might look a little strange. So adding in some smaller ones with a lower opacity in the center will help to break that up. And of course, it's really gonna pop against your darker parts so it gives it a sense of depth right there you go let's take a step back and see how the flow worked yeah i think that looks fine now there are a couple other things that you can also do i also want to show rapids i want to also show waterfalls so i'll show you how to do that real quick all right waterfalls are not complex they're super easy to make what you just need to do is to make sure that there are two um Make sure that there are two rocks side by side, okay? So what I'm gonna do is probably extend the river or push the, the bank out a little bit so that there's a section for rocks to sit on and we can make a nice little waterfall. I'm not gonna make a large epic one. So I'll push this out a little bit and like this, and I'll push this part out a little bit as well. Just a little bit like this. Try not to make it too unrealistic, just a little bit, okay? and we can adjust this as we go. It's just a reminder, just a place to kind of show me where my rocks will be, all right? A couple different things you can use. Uh, there are plateau rocks, there are mountains. That doesn't look good, but we'll fix it. Don't worry, my mistake. Look at this strange bottleneck. How did this happen? I don't know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and throw it in here. Let's do it. Let's take a look here. Go to Fancy Regional HD and I'll show you how to make waterfalls. I think I also have a waterfall tutorial, uh, but it's for battle maps specifically. So if you if you don't see the one you're looking for, sorry, <laughs> my mistake. Okay, let's go ahead and use these icebergs. Now you're gonna say to yourself, well, wait a minute, they're blue, dude, what's up? Don't worry, I'm on top of that. Instead, what we're gonna do is change that U. I'm gonna boost the opacity and let's change the U to see if I can find a red that I can manipulate to make uh, kind of a brownish color. Let's drop the saturation down, bring the brightness down. There we go, Much, a little bit better. Okay, now we can go ahead and take these. There's a nice slope. You'll see there's a nice slope on the left side. That's super nice. I like that slope. That's kind of what I'm going for. Let's boost the contrast so the line work is just a little bit darker. There we go, that'll work just fine, thank you. All right, now we can go in. And whoa, that is so big. <laughs> Little too big there. Okay, let's put two rocks side by side uh, across the rivers and then we'll put a second one in the middle and we'll have waterfalls going on either side. Okay, all right, there you go. And I'm also gonna put a little bit of land in the center as well. So I'll show you that. Just one moment, please bear with me, my friends. We're gonna have it kind of going out like this. Okay, there we go. So we have a little bit of land right there. 
and I'm gonna fix this area as well, but we'll get there. So now we have that rock standing on a little bit of island right there. Next step, waterfall time. Yeah, here we go. Waterfall, waterfalls, yeah, let's do it, okay. Waterfalls are not as complex as you think. What makes a good waterfall is just having the rocks and then the two points in which the waterfall will extend left to right, whatever it might be, that is pretty much as simple as it is. Just two rocks or three rocks and then put the waterfalls in between. It's really not any more complex than that, okay? So it's pretty simple stuff. So let me make sure that I pick the right waterfall that I wanna use. I'll put this one right here in the front like this. Let's put another one. Oh, you know, I think actually we can bring this up right there looks about right okay and then i can go in and put another rock formation uh right behind that to connect it if i need to so i can put it maybe right here let me just double check to make sure put it behind by the way so put a layer behind there we go it's like this let me see it's a little too much let me flip this real quick let me see if this one works a little bit better and we're going to change some things so where that waterfall is not so um visible let me see here let's push all the way up against here and then i'll put another waterfall uh that's not the right one let me see here how i want to go about this this can be somewhat challenging no i think that's okay we need to make sure to put a rock in here so that it fits properly let's just rotate it this way and then i'll put another rock to hide that one right there okay perfect yeah what i'm trying to do is to make it the rock parallel to uh, the waterfall edge so that way it explains why why that's happening so let me put that one there and then we'll put another one a smaller one I think right there along this edge Bear with me thank you very much there we go I want to make sure I blend those in so first waterfall we're not done yet we're gonna add more don't worry so we'll get to that I promise you okay there we go uh, so there might be you might be able to see some rock behind it and stuff I'll show you a real quick trick on how to give it a little bit more turbulence go to object shadow click white shadow boop, pops out you can inc increase the blur to make it larger or smaller up to you you've just added in some extra white to show turbulence and to hide a little bit of the rock formation that's behind it so you just did a little bit less work you didn't have to paint back there all you had to do was just turn on the object shadow of uh, the waterfall to white and it did the work for you so that is kind of the beauty of that okay let's go ahead and put down another waterfall I'm gonna put it right here like this and of course we're gonna have to follow those same rules and uh, go ahead and put some rocks to show where the ledge is like this let's go ahead and push the, uh, I might have to put another rock behind there so let's do that real quick let's just see what I can do here rotate put that a layer behind just got to make sure real quick let me say right about is it behind it or in front let me double check ah, there we go let's bring this one down a layer you do have to do a little bit of work of course always bring that down several layers connect that and we'll also make sure that we get the stroke as well to work okay so notice how I have to take this waterfall and subtract well that's adding but <laughs> don't do that don't don't do that part <laughs> you're gonna have to connect of course your river edges to wherever the waterfall meets so up against that line work right there of course as you would expect and I'll go ahead and delete all the land right here as well okay all right now we'll go in same trick just select it object shadow change it to white okay and we'll put it in the center so it's in the center oopsie that is not correct there we go all right much better same thing with this one i kind of think the shadow is a little off so we'll go back to zero and center it much better there we go all right so now you have some waterfalls there now when it comes to waterfalls or just showing any kind of um white water or rapid you can use that same snow technique but just apply more of it up against where the waterfall starts where it's declined it goes down and then where it meets and clashes with the water at the bottom so just go like this with your bg and go ahead and add a little bit like this and you're going to create this white water 
wrap it. Let's also change that size down. I th we're not the size of this, this but the size. Oh, yeah, that was right. There we go. Yeah, let's do that. Let's apply it. And so you're creating white water rapid. And it's not hard to make. Just apply that snow texture, get some single clicks in there, and you're really starting to see now some rapids. Nice. You really see the white water. There you go. Nice. Okay. Now you really have that white water. And of course, you're going to want to hide a little bit of your rock formation. Again, just do those uh, do that uh, blending, so or not blending, I'm sorry, uh, that's not the word I'm looking for, it evades me. <laughs> go ahead and throw those down, there you go. So now you, it doesn't look so weird with the strange um, mountains. You're hiding much of the line work at the base to kind of give it a little bit more uh, Little bit more balance right so it's really not that complex to do a waterfall just you just have to remember to uh <clears throat> remember to make sure that you line up uh the stroke line with your waterfall and all that stuff i'm gonna remove uh the stroke i actually don't care for it i forgot to do that there we go and we'll wait for a second to go away there you go much better yeah 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 much much better removing that stroke line much much better mm -mm. okay so now you can also throw in waves. How much time we got? 11.31, we're doing that, right? Let me type in the waves real quick. Oh, there's some waves right here, perfect. Okay, so if you want, uh, you can create more stress, more lines. Uh, so if I take this river, uh, if I take this right here, you can go ahead and apply it to where it connects with the base or the top. Of the waterfall and this is going to create a little bit more depth so let me just apply it to where it's behind there you go perfect and you're going to apply a couple of them uh like this to it so you have a little bit more line work kind of showing that the river is really picking up speed and you might have to change the opacity of these just a little bit that's up to you you'll have to do that and of course uh, if you want you might want to change them to where they're emanating away from the fall. So just rotate them like this and really show that the, it is emanating away from uh, away from the waterfall, as you would kind of expect, right? So this is how you show momentum, how you show action, how you show that there's stuff kind of going on with water flow. Super nice. There you go. And you just have to f just add more more and more details as you go okay the one last thing that i can mention is is that let's say that you want to show uh reflections of light in the water i'll show you how to do that real quick reflection of water is not complex it's super easy we're going to go to fantasy battle maps 2.0 and look up fey lights okay sometimes when you look at the water you see these beautiful gleaming beads of pearls along the water it's kind of beautiful to see that glistening on that water and we really want to emanate that so we're going to use this fey light texture we're going to go ahead and of course size change it so you already see some nice white right there and that's going to create our sparkle all right now if you want you can use yellow as well because but i like to use white personally it's just my favorite i'm going to bring the opacity down bring the size up and of course you're not going to put sparkles underneath the bridge because there's no water there's no light going underneath in the shadow, right? So of course, when you're applying your reflections of light, you're probably gonna wanna put them where there's no shadows, okay? So just factor that in mind when you're applying this technique. So I'll just go ahead and put some nice, uh, that, I don't think it's showing very well. Let's go a little higher up. Make sure it's a BG, go to size, here we go. And you can really, oopsie, I just broke the rule I just said <laughs> in the shadows. Don't do that, you butts. <laughs> okay, nice one. All right, let me go ahead and apply here. There we go. So you can really get some reflections in the water. Those are a little big. Let's go down even smaller. Okay, that's a little big. I forgot to bring the size down. There we go. Bring them way, way down. There we go. Much smaller. Okay, now if you were zoomed in closer to uh, the river, much closer than the distance you're at now, of course, scale up. To make it appropriate but if we'll go ahead and apply it real quick like this and you can kind of create 
this illusion of um, reflection in the water. Okay, just remember to not put them on the shadows like I just did previously. Gwenthal, welcome. So go ahead and just apply that there. And if you want, you can also uh, go over it several times. And what's also really nice is that when you add those sparkles over the darker parts, the deeper parts, it just makes it pop out even more. So that's super nice. Then I'll go in with a smaller size and just maybe a couple clicks here and there, make some of the spots really, really pop out a little bit more. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and go out here. Really get the sparkly sparkles. This is sparkle sparkle time. Yes. And I like sparkles, by the way. No one better diss the sparkles. They will face the fury of my teeth. Sparkles is sick. Okay, awesome. And I also noticed that I'm at like 300 plus changes. I might want to consider saving here. <laughs> All right, well, sweet. We've only got about 30 minutes. Sparkles are life. Yes. Give me your sparkles. Rain your sparkles down upon me. I will bathe in the sparkliness. Mm. A shower of sparkles. Yippee skippy. Sparkles are not sus. They're awesome. Remember that. Sus, 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 sussy. No, no, no. No, 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 no. All right. So we'll save this and then... I think that's really all there is to that, which was quite a bit. That was a long one. I think we'll have a little bit of time left to do battle maps because I do want to show you rivers with battle maps, but really the technique remains the same. It's really the same thing. You're going to have lighter uh, water. It's going to be lighter, closer to shore, where it's going to be shallower, darker in the deeper ends. You're going to, if you want stuff underwater, Make sure you use the luminosity blend mode. Drop the contrast darkness. Obviously, if you're if something is in the shadow of a stamp, you're probably going to want to drop the darkness of the stamp, just like you would the shadow there in that tree or the shadow there underneath the bridge. So you just have to think about that when you're making uh, your water. So just some things to, to think about there. I'm going to refresh the page and we'll do battle maps. I'll try to speed it up uh, and I'll show you how to make a bridge in battle maps because... There are no actual bridges that I know of in battle maps. Uh, you have to kind of make your own. Mita the tyrant has spoken. Hear me and obey. So it has been said, let it be written. <laughs> I am the tyrannical lord. Obey my will. <laughs> Dude, I hate to break this to you folks, but I don't have a deep enough voice to be a villain. Okay? My voice is a little more hot, too higher pitched for that. All right? If I had a bit of a deeper voice, I would... Yeah. Yes, you will obey my will. You see how lame that is? You see, I can't do it. I'm not a basso, okay? <laughs> it don't work, okay? It doesn't work. I try. I also failed villain school, tyrant school, miserably. I got like an F in every course. I'm too nice. I can't do it. I tried being mean and uh, it only worked for like a week. And then I got booted. I got F'd out, you know? They just said, you know what? Get out of here. You're not... Bully material, sir. You need to leave immediately. You are a disgrace upon our establishment. Yep, that's exactly what they said. They sent me a little letter, got in the mail. I read it. I was like, oh, man, that's not disappointing at all. Yay! I don't want to be a tyrant. Please let me fail that school anytime. <laughs> all right. Let's do battle map real quick. And it's that same technique, right? You notice here that I added... The cliffs right here, exactly the same thing. Uh, you don't have to have cliffs along your river, but it's nice to have them, if you, especially if you want to do a bridge. So I'll quickly go into Fantasy Regional, or not Fantasy Regional, we just did that. Fantasy Battle Maps real quick, and we'll show you how to make that same scene with Fantasy Battle Maps, and hopefully with less blather on my side. You sound like a broken record, Mati. Path tool, path tool, path tool. Mask tool, mask tool, F key, F key, F key, F key, F key. <laughs> Hope I don't drive you that crazy, folks. <laughs> All right, let's go into the catalog here and grab this stuff. We're doing it. We're not done with rivers yet, I assure you. Let's grab cliffs here. And all right, so let's go ahead and put together the cliffs. Remember, put your cliffs down first. 
Okay, and that way you can conform the river to the cliffs instead of the other way around because, of course, the cliffs are not always going to be at the shapes when you put them together to kind of make the proper shape around the river, right? So it makes sense to put the cliffs down first and then conform your river to the cliff shapes. It's just a heck of a lot easier that way, okay? Trust me. Much, much easier. Okay, so I'll pick the scale I want. We'll go with 80 first, and I'm going to go ahead and kind of just make the shape that I want. So I'll kind of make a little bit of a meandering. Not too much at this scale. I don't have to have a lot. I only need just enough. So let's go ahead and create that shape of that meandering. Oop, that shape right there works just fine. We'll throw it down right there. And then we'll do the same. We'll make the cliffs for the other side. And then I'll make a bridge real quick. And just the same kind of basic techniques. Let's go with this one right about there. Look, I was very pressured in bully school. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's do this. There we go, that'll work just fine. I think, all right, here we go, all right. All right, so you kind of created that. Let me just add in the last bit at the top here, I think. No, I think that's fine. Don't have to be perfect. Uh, okay, so now you've done that, you can go in with your mask tool, uh, subtract, circle brush, um, and then, well first we'll just make the kind of center part. Wait for it to load first, there we go. Okay, the reason why I start with the center line first is so that way I have something to like work with. Then I can increase the size like this, and you can go in. Excuse me, I burped. How rude! Pardon me, none of you needed to know that. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and add this in. Our section here, boom, boom, boom. let's go ahead and add a little bit more here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Well, we're making rivers. Yep. Let's hope the river police don't show up. Wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. That river doesn't split. Psh, psh. You will be punished for this insolence. How dare you? You will follow Earth physics at all times or be punished immensely. It will be 30 floggings for you. How dare you? You must follow Earth physics at all times or there will be immediate punishments. Do you understand? Wee wee wee! The River Council has spoken. Throw them in the river jail. That's right. Throw a milestone around them. Throw them in. How dare you violate the codes of the river? The river code. How dare you? You will be punished. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right. So now we got some water in there, and I probably make it a lot bigger. I'll probably fill in the whole section instead of just that little one there. So we'll go in like this and just get nice and big. Because, you know, I mean, you could just walk across this river. <laughs> you could just walk across this river. We want a river that is imposing. Why walk across the river in the water when you can take the bridge? Oopsie. In fact, you know what? I'll fill in just the whole section. We'll do the whole dang thing. Just, you know, just the whole dang thing. I want to make you make a Salvador River falling upwards. Well, you know, that's the kind of way my brain works. So, heck yeah, I think I could pull that off. So, <clears throat> right, we're just going to fill in the whole dang thing. We're just going to fill you in. All right. I hate this. I'm just going to have to fill you in. All right. We're filling you in. You understand me? All right. I'm just going to fill it all in. Oh, quack bot. Whoa, I just got here and you sound exactly like my friend. Also, is this guide for battle maps or world maps? All of the above. What bot quack? All of the above. Oh, well, I will take it as a compliment that I sound like your friend. It gives me confidence to know that there's some familiarity. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. We want to do both. You know, if you're going to do a river stream, it's going to be odd if it was just in one style. It's nice to break it down in all styles because, you know, rivers are in all of them. Rivers are on parchment maps. They're on world maps. They're on regional maps. They're on battle maps. Rivers are everywhere. They're taking over. The rivers are taking over. <laughs> Run for the hills. Run for higher ground. The rivers are coming for you. <laughs> all right. There we go. Okay. 
All right, so now you got that. I am the Bob Ross. That is me. I am Bob. I am Diddly Bob. That is me. I love Bob Ross, by the way. I will never knock Bob Ross. Rest in peace. Yes, me love ya. All right, okay. So now you got that part. I'm not gonna worry about decorating up here, but what I what you can do is use a stone to blend in the stamp more right here. Uh, Run to the Hills, best Iron Maiden song. Probably would occur, concur with that. Uh, all right, all, all right, all right. I see the great outcry to blend my stamps, I will. <laughs> I didn't hear anything. <laughs> If you're gonna do, I mean, with battle maps, I mean, whenever you're applying a stamp, you're always gonna wanna factor about blending. So I'll do that real quick. It's always nice to do a little bit of blending. Hey, first time chat, sup, what up, Mr. Corwin? Glad to have you here, welcome, awesome. I love it, I love seeing new faces because new faces are awesome. Me like, sup, sup. All right, I'm gonna use the edgy brush because the edgy brush is absolutely beautiful i absolutely recommend that you learn to use the edgy brush it is going to be your best friend <clears throat> practice 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 all right so now that i've kind of created the cliffs here you want to blend them in of course so i like to take like a stone texture of some kind this looks like some kind of uh dungeon let me take a look real quick uh this is a uh, concrete i'm also going to maybe boost the the lightness see how there's some highlights on there i kind of want that to match in so i'll boost up the brightness just a bit like this, go back in, should be a little bit better this time. And I'm just gonna do a single kind of stroke with the edgy brush, set it to FG, remember, and just put it all along the edge here. You remember, remember what we were talking about earlier, kind of uh, do a first little blob. Okay, that's the first step. So start with the first one like this, get it all in there. Don't miss anything, you get those, you get those edges, you naughty edges, we're gonna blend you. Yes, we are. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna blend you, naughty edges you. All right, we'll bring the size down and just kind of single click further away to kind of blend in those, uh, blend that stamp in. There you go. So now you have some gray blending, excellent. Next step, I totally recommend using a, a cracked alpha texture. Um, and let's go look for that real quick. Ooh, that was kind of fun to see. What happened there? And I'll go ahead and throw in that cracked ground right here. It's gonna be called cracked ground. It's an alpha, okay? Alpha just means transparency. And you're gonna to have to change the size and placement. See how huge that is? No, 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 that's not good. Too small, also not good. Let's do that, there we go. Looks about the right size. Now you're just gonna go along that edge and just put some cracked ground to further uh, some of the blending. So what I'm doing here is you'll notice that there's no other line work uh, that protrudes out from the cliff. So you would kind of expect maybe some line work uh, to connect with the cliffs and go further out from it. First time chat. Hey, Tobias2947. Thanks for your wonderful videos. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Will this video be recorded and uploaded for someone like me who missed the beginning? Absolutely, my friend Tobias. I will upload this to YouTube. It takes a couple hours for it to load, but if you go to our YouTube channel, every single stream that we do gets uploaded there. Go watch that. There's over a hundred videos on our channel. Go check it out. There's so many, and believe me, we have hundreds and hundreds of more videos to come. Lots of content for you guys because, hey, that's our job. We're going to help you to beef up beefy beef up those map making skills nice and beefy all right yeah all right sweet the link is there for you tobias go click that subscribe go watch those videos <clears throat> all right we just did um we just did political maps in the last stream so go check that out if you haven't seen it yet so we're applying alpha i'm gonna boost it all the way up i think to 100 because i really want the line work to show up so you kind of notice that it adds this really nice transition, uh, really causes it to blend in. Now it's hard to distinguish between uh, what is the FG layer and the stamp. You've blended them together. Oh, you're making your first map right now? That's so awesome. I know, map beef should totally be an emote, right? A map made out of meat? <laughs> this is the meatiest map I have ever seen. Absolutely. 
making my first map right now, going to check this YouTube channel right now to see if there's a swamp guide. Whew, I don't, you know what? I think there is, go check uh, the, oh shoot, I think it's about creating landscape. It should be, it's an older video, and I cover all the various types of biomes from swamps to rivers to lakes to ocean to coastlines to forests to Arctic to desert to Mesa, you name it. Go check that out, okay? All right, so you notice that now that line work has popped in and oh, yeah, looks so much nicer, right? You really like that blending. Now, when we go into stamps and we want to add in maybe uh, a bridge, you're going to notice that there really isn't a bridge stamp. Not that I know of. Let me just type it in just to verify that. Is there a bridge? Oh, there is. There's rope bridges. Yep, there is a rope bridge. So you can use that. But what happens if you want to make a bridge out of stone, right? Let's say that you want a stone bridge. You want a stoned bridge, man. You want the reefer bridge, okay? But it does not there. So you have to make one. Well, I'm about to show you how to make a stoned bridge. All right. Are you ready, folks? Let's do it. All right. Now, making a bridge is not as complex as you think. It's actually only two steps. That's how beautiful it is. All right. So first, we're going to want to go into battle maps, of course, and you're going to want to pick whatever wall set that you're going to use to create the two parallel lines that are going to create your bridge. Really, it's just only three stamps. We're only probably going to use three stamps to make a bridge. It's really as simple as that. So pick whatever stamp that you want to be your bridge. You can be brick. Just type in wall, okay? And then all the walls will pop up. Pick whatever wall you want. If it's going to be a broken bridge, maybe use a broken stamp. In fact, let's make a broken bridge. Okay, well, let's make a whole one and then we'll break it, okay? Yeah. Are you ready to break some stuff? I'm just in a furious mood today. I need to let out my inner chaos by destroying a bridge. All right, we're doing it right now. Here we go. All right, so I'm probably gonna use stone walls. I think that works just fine. Stone bridges make sense. And the way that this works is you're going to first make sure that you group all of these cliff stamps so that they're all on the same layer. If I just group them, layer one already there. Perfect, okay? That's right, I told you earlier on the stream that after I cross my bridges, I like to burn them like the bastard that I am. What can I say? <laughs> all right, so everything is on the same layer for a reason because you kind of don't want to find out that one of your wall bridges, <laughs> one of the walls on your bridge is underneath a cliff and one's on top, <laughs> right? So if you, if you uh, make your bridge, just make sure that uh, you, uh, I don't know, where am I? What was I saying? <laughs> Thanks for working with me on that one, folks. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and turn layer off. So all you're doing is just constructing first uh, where the bridge goes meets on either side. So we'll go like this. And I know you're going to say, well, wait a minute. I can see the cliffs underneath. Oh, yes, I know that. We will get there, my friends. Don't you worry, my fellow skeptics. Don't you worry. I will fix this. Don't you worry. And do not fret, my friends. I'm going to push these two, these four walls right here up to layer three. So there's some distance between layer one, right? So obviously, layer two is in between one and three. Okay. This is the holy hand grenade. All right, it's not one, it's not two, it's not three. Thrice is the number which you pulls the pin, okay? So make sure some distance, all right? So now, how many hours did you spend already? It would be nice counter on the website. How many How many hours? Oh, on uh, which, which website exactly? Let me know. Okay, so now once you put that together, uh, I'm going to now grab what's called clipping masks. All right, clippy masks are nice. Me likey the clippy mask. You f type in the clipping mask. So you just type in clip, okay? And then you're gonna have clipping mask right there. are two kinds, one with a hard edge, one with a soft edge. You're probably gonna want the hard edge. Now what we're doing here is we're going to want to create a space that we wanna paint. And the reason why I like to do it this way is because you might wanna paint your bridge ground whatever texture you want, right? So I'm gonna place each one of these hard edges these hard edge stamps and you notice that it's below so layer two while those walls are on layer one 
You see how simple that is? It's really as simple as that, right? Now the next step, once you've done that, is you're probably gonna wanna do some shadow work. Now you're gonna have to do shadows individually or paint them. It's up to you how you wanna go about it, okay? If you wanna paint shadows, you wanna use object shadows. With this one, I'm gonna paint. So first, let's choose a texture that we want. If you're gonna paint shadows, make sure you put the texture down first. Let's pick a texture that we want to use. Let's use this kind of gravel kind of texture. It works fine. We're gonna to have to change the size. That looks massive. We'll bring that down. Yeah, this has only been going on for about two hours now. So it's only gonna go on for maybe another 30 minutes probably, or 15 minutes, I'm not sure. Uh, it's just that I wanted to make sure because uh, I'm not going to do every single one because the concept remains the same for all of them, but I absolutely wanted to do a battle map because battle maps are, of course, far more, far, far, far more um, applicable, way more utility than having regional maps with bridges on them. That's more of an aesthetic. Battle maps are utility. You're going to use them, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and use that edgy brush. We're going to bring the opacity down to about, ooh, let's say 45. Okay, set to FG layer. Now, one thing about clipping masks is they pick up what's on the FG layer. So that's what's so beautiful about this. Both sides of these river are made with the FG. So when I paint them over the clipping mask, it will also paint them on the FG layer. First, you're going to start with uh, the bridge part. So fill that in with as much of that brick, with not brick, but that stone as possible. Single click. You can keep some of the dirt underneath to show that there's been trotting, some uh, use, some travel on there. And then go ahead and have the path kind of lead out and bring not so much kind of stone a little bit. So leave some areas uh, untouched with the stone, right? Now that you've done that, you'll kind of notice that it kind of just looks like there's just a flat kind of wall right here. What about shadows? How is it that I portray shadow to kind of create that the walls of this bridge are a little higher up. They're not just flat where my feet are. They're just a little higher up. How do you do that? You're going to use shadow. So I'll go in with the black color specifically. I'm going to remove the edgy brush. Don't want that. Bring the softness up. Now whenever I'm working with shadows, I generally like to leave it in a range between 30 and 40. 30 works pretty good, 30, 35, because when it comes to painting your shadows, you're going to want, it's going to take a couple strokes. One stroke of painting shadow is probably not going to be enough transition. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to set to FG and I'm just going to put the shadow along first the edge right here. Now what we're doing is called ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion is how you show shadows. It's how you show contrast. Sorry. So I'll go ahead and make sure that there's a little bit of shadow here first. I'm going to put them on the inside. You can put them on the outside as well. But for now, I'm going to put them on the, on the inside like this. That's the first step. So now I've added a little bit of shadow on the inside. Next step, bring it up a little bit, say around 45. Bring the size down to 9. And then really get a harder edge just along the edge right here. Let me go ahead and just go like this across. Like this. There we go. All right, and you're gonna see the difference. Now, if you take a step back, you'll notice that this wall looks a little bit taller while this one doesn't because I've added more shadow. This is the trick to depth, okay? It's ambient inclusion, all right? If you want to show a hill, then, or you wanna show a tall wall or cliff, ambient inclusion at the base of that cliff will make that to pop out. So that's the trick, ambient inclusion, is the way to make things work. So I'll apply that again right here, like this. And now you have the depth, and that works really well, okay? One other thing that I like to do, it's not necessarily river related, but it's something to give a little bit more life and character to your roads, and that is to add some stones randomly on the road. So if I take some of these random rocks, Let's go ahead and see if I can find a rock real quick. Should be some rocks lying around here. One moment, there they are right there. Okay, you can take these rocks and you can place them on top of some of uh, the stones. And what this will do is create a little bit more depth. It'll look like there's some stones popping out of uh, the road and that gives it a little bit of extra depth and it just looks kind of interesting. 
and it kind of makes it look more interesting. So I always like to throw just a little bit of a scattering of rocks along that road to give it some depth, okay? And you might have to change uh, the shadows of each rock as well. So if I just select all from here, go into object shadows, the scope was zero. There we go, and I'll boost up the shadow a little bit. There we go. And that way, it kind of looks like there's a little bit of rock that's been kicked up from a wheel of a, of a cart, from walking, rocks get loosened up, they get pounded in. So all these different kind of things, it just adds a little bit more uh, character. Now the last thing with shadowing is you want to also show that this bridge is higher up. There's no shadow on the water side, right? Well, that's problematic. So what we should do is probably use, uh, again, shadows with the BG layer to show a little bit of depth on this side, okay? So let's do this. I'm gonna go BG layer, and we're gonna add a little bit of shadow right there and a little bit of shadow right here, okay? Now, this is if the sun is straight down, okay? Straight down. I'll do angles if you wanna do that in just a little bit, okay? So next, just go in with that ambient occlusion right here like this, and it's really gonna make it look like it just popped right up, really pops out, okay? That's a little too dark, I'd say. But, but, it's a little too dark. Bring that down a little bit more, there we go. Bring the size up a little bit, and then, there we go, that's a little bit better, okay. This is just if it's top down. Personally, when it comes to uh, your battle maps, the easiest way to make a battle map is top down. It's just to have uh, midday, the light straight down. It's less work for you to work with shadows, but if you want to show directional shadows from different times of the day, you totally can. Let's just apply that real quick right here, okay? So what I would do, if you wanted to have the shadow direction, you first have to designate the shadow direction. So I'll take a path real quick. All right, and I'm going to sh designate where the shadow is. So let's just say that the shadow, the light source is kind of emanating like kind of this way, like this, like that, okay? So then the shadow is going to project away from the direction of the shadow. So what I would do is do this. Uh, bring up that size a little bit and then set to BG. And you're going to have the majority of the shadow be on this side. So you have a little bit of a dark shadow on this side. Same thing, FG layer. Bring the size down, get more shadow on this side, okay? There you go. Now you have that. Let's go ahead and apply a little bit more here for that ambient inclusion. And I'm going to put just a little bit on this side, just a little bit. Now, the only reason why I'm throwing just a little bit is this isn't the shadow. This is ambient inclusion that makes it pop out a little bit. I'm just going to add a little bit, okay? I know that there's supposed to be sun directed there, but guess what? If you want to make it have depth, you'll have to add in ambient occlusion okay so that's not a shadow that's just ambient occlusion using contrast to make it seem like it's hovering over the water okay yes i know it's <laughs> there, technically there wouldn't be a shadow there i know that that's where the light is it's the same thing with your cliffs here you notice there's a cliff here the shadows are going to be along this edge okay that's the trick all right so you'll have to put in shadows along each edge away from that. As simple as that. That's how easy shadows are. Okay, so if you have, uh, you first establish your light, your direction from where your light comes from, and then, <laughs> and then apply your shadow. How dare you? I will inform the river police of this. Woo, 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 woo. We're throwing you in river jail, damn you. <laughs> river jail for you. You've been damned. That kind of dam, I mean. <laughs> oh, hey, there's one other thing I forgot to mention. I showed shadows. I hope that was helpful, by the way. Uh, super cool. I forgot to mention this. One thing it's really nice is to add uh, posts at the end of your bridge. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick. And I'll change my uh, blend my shadow to object shadow. There we go. And I'll have the shadow projecting out and really make it kind of dark. Make it a black, there we go, and we'll project it out a little bit, there we go. And you can put two of these on each end, and if it's two the same, you can always rotate it like this, 
this way you have kind of like these posts where the stone kind of connects kind of iconic for a bridge right so there you go that is as simple as it gets for that not that complex right let's go ahead and save that 194 changes Whew. all right hopefully I can beat this out in the next 15 minutes I'm going to show you how to do a broken bridge hopefully it won't take too long all right sweet how dare you I will inform the river police immediately sweet hey I'm glad that's so cool yes that's what we're aiming for here we want the cool yeah it's shadow work is not as complex as you think it's just identify the direction shadows project away from that direction it's really as simple as that right yes some boom for the bridge i wish we had some some dynamite to just put right here and light it up and then boom <laughs> all right so all right so what i like to do is first delete delete uh the edges each wall keep the clipping mask for now okay now you're gonna go in i'm gonna have it to where uh one section of the bridge is it has some connection there you're going to go in grab the same walls look for the broken ones so one moment here where are you one second there we go broken wall there you go now you have to be a little selective about this because you don't want your segments your broken parts to be uh kind of hovering over the river so you'll have to be a little strategic about which ones you choose. This one right here looks okay. Uh, there is a little bit of that. So let's rotate it just a bit to kind of make sure that those rocky bits, you know, those little bits right there, don't uh, fall off the bridge, yeah? Okay, there we go. That looks fine. That's gonna be a broken part. Let's also delete one clipping mask. There we go. Just for now, oh no, let's kind of keep that one for right now. Let's keep it there. We'll figure out what to do from there. Uh, let's actually delete that one. I think this is actually long enough to work like that. Perfect. Now I can probably delete. There we go. And I know there's flat lines. I know the shadows are here. Don't worry. I <laughs> will fix that. <laughs> patience, comrades, patience. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead here. Throw on... What other broken bits do we got here? I want all the broken bits. Okay, let's put this one right here. I think it works kind of well. It kind of lines up against here. That works just fine. And then let's throw in another one that's broken right here against here. Okay, and then let's have one that's not broken right here. Real quick, okay? And then I'll show you how to do uh, the broken bits on the ground part because you're like well wait a minute how is how it how do you how 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 do how to how i will show you don't you worry stress not my friends i will show you okay all right so we're gonna get to the painting part let's show the part that kind of uh emulates uh a broken part of the bridge the ground part you're gonna bring uh the clipping masks down in size like this, let's go with a, a medium size first. Copy, paste, add another one over here. Copy, paste again, bring the size down. And now you can really start to add in these clipping masks uh, like this to kind of create the uh, parts that make it look like it's broken. Okay, so I'll bring this down a layer like this, there we go. And what you're doing is kind of creating a broken sections. It's really as simple as that, not complex, Pretty easy. There we go. I think that looks good. So you kind of have these broken kind of sections like that. Okay. Next step, you're going to want to, of course, we're going to take uh, that water, of course, and we're going to have to repaint it. <laughs> of course. Uh, let's go only used in this map so that I can verify. I think fancy regional fantasy four. Let's just select all of them to make sure I use the right water texture because big brain over here didn't favorite the textures big brain over here naughty naughty okay let me go ahead and make sure it's set to bg layer oopsie i need it to be at the right size there we go Ooh, a little little dark i don't think that's the right one naughty man naughty man all right let's take a look here where did i do a select all how are we on 10 minutes we're doing all right thanks for bearing with me folks 
Glad that you are all here. I love it. We had a raid party early. That was fun as muffins. Heck yeah. Don't you diss those muffins. Uh, loading the art, it take forever. There we go. I think this is the right one. Let me just verify that. Yeah, there we go. Yay. We did it. Yippee. Okay. All right. Now that we've done that. Yes, it was region. Oh, I think it was world actually, but I'm not sure. Let me, let me double check. Thank you, King Clown. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh water textures oh i think that's i think that's watercolor my bad um oopsie poopsie on my heart well naughty man i shall spank my hand three times one two three ow <laughs> all right let's go ahead and take every single one of these stamps and i'm going to turn off uh all the shadows for right now let's just go with none there we go much better and of course i'm going to want to change up some of these stamps so that they kind of don't overlap too much and then of course i did all that painting of shadows so we'll have to remove that of course so we'll go back in with our gravel rock here and i'm just gonna paint oopsie not <laughs> the fg i meant the bg i mean the fg there we go we'll throw that in there we go and i know there's no shadows yet don't worry there will be we're getting there i promise you don't you worry okay so you have a little bit of the broken bridge there all right so you have that so you'll have to of course paint uh the bg around each thing to make things pop out so this is the trick we were doing right so let's go with 33 bring the size down and i'm going to go bg layer only and just right underneath create a little bit of a dark shadow underneath because remember this is how you do depth ambient occlusion all right some shadow there all right we'll do the first step there we go so you have some shadow there. Don't worry, we're gonna get to uh, the darker line, which is gonna give it the real depth that we want, of course. And we can even put some debris in the water if you'd like. I'm sure some of you would agree with this idea, I don't know. Because you would expect debris to be in the water. Where'd it go? Did it just float upward? What kind of world is this? What physics? Gravity goes up? What? <laughs> what is happening? All right, so now we have that darker line. Let's go even darker than that. This is not dark enough. We must go Batman dark enough. You understand me? That billionaire snob. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and throw in that hard shadow here. There we go. Really get in that and get that ambient inclusion there to really get that depth. All right, there we go. Boop, boop, boop. Takes just a few moments. Just go along that ledge there. Just get it all in. Da, da, da. We're doing this on Bob Ross time. Yeah. All right. Here we go. There we go. Much better. Got that ambient inclusion in there to make it give it some depth there. And I'll probably even throw in some more shadow. I'll just kind of scatter it around to give it some depth, you know. All right. There we go. Boop, boop. Almost there. Almost there. All right. Boop. All right, let me just step out to make sure that, that I have that correctly. Yeah, that does look correct. Yes. I'm at 65 changes. Just four more changes and then I should save, okay? Just four more changes because we're at 65 and I'm just going to quickly add four more changes. All right, here we go. Oopsie. There we go. All right. We're going to have to do some painting along... Uh, the uh, shadows as well. So let's go with f the FG layer. Okay, bring this up. There we go. All right, now, so of course, it doesn't look like the stone is really um, has some any shadowing there. So let's go ahead and put the shadow FG layer, by the way, switch it over. Go in here like this and just put those dark shadows along all these edges. And then we'll put in that darker shadow after that. All right, there we go. Because you want it to pop out, right? Come on now, we need the popping. I want to hear the popping. I don't hear popping. How are you going to be a pop pop map star if I don't hear the popping? Right? All right, there we go. Put a dark in here around this edge. Yeah, there we go. Ba ba ba. Okay. Along this ledge here, perfect. Pop, pop, pop it like it's hot. 
Puppet like attack. Yeah. Oh, I dig it. Nice song. All right. And let's go up. Add in that last little, little belt of little line of ambient occlusion. There we go. All right. Make things to popping out. All right. Everyone knows in the stream, you can't take me seriously. I can't, I can't be serious for more than about 30 seconds. Maybe that's a stretch. I don't know. I've always considered myself to be like three years old. <laughs> oh. All right, let's go ahead and add in that line there. Nice. Sweet. There's so many cool tricks. I mean, you know, it's not, you don't have to be a mad genius artist. Just you got to know some of the techniques, practice, and you get better. It's just, it's just a matter of time. You just got to practice, practice, and you'll get it. You know, being an artist, some people have it naturally, and they have a, a weird black line across their bridges, you know? <laughs> Oops, I don't know how that happened. I have no idea how that happened there. Uh, what's the longest you've spent on a map, Mr. Corwin asked? Oh, I don't really know. Uh, some of the harder maps that I've made took about several hours so or not several hours sorry um i say probably like 30 or 40 hours especially for commission maps because when people have specific requests commission maps take a lot longer if it's you making the map yourself with your own thing you can uh you know make it last a little bit shorter just just depends but uh, i'd say probably um 40 hours it takes a little while you know like Good maps take time, and there's no real secret to, uh, you know, becoming a good artist or a mapper. It's just time. It's just, it's just time. That's really what the cause of it is, okay? All right. Uh, yeah, that looks okay. There's actually so much more that we can do to this. There's actually so much. Oh my gosh, you could add rubble everywhere. Let's real quick make some rubble underwater and then we'll call it good. Rubble, 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 rubble. All right, so as always, we're going to change that blend mode. If you want rubble under the water, we'll change it to luminosity. We're going to change some settings here. We're going to change the brightness. It's under the water. Further down, we're going to change the contrast maybe a little bit. Okay, and then uh, we're going to make a couple of these. Yes, yeah, cities take forever. Oh my gosh. No, cities just take three minutes. That's all that it takes. It's all that it takes is just a couple hours. No, uh, cities take freaking forever. Okay, they take forever. Oh my God, they take forever. Yes, it's so true. I totally believe it. Okay, so now you have that rubble there. You're just going to flatten it to the BG layer. So it only shows up there. Now, if you're not satisfied with that, it does, it's not right. You can always just paint over it. Now that it's been flattened, you can continue to kind of paint over it uh, if you wish. But make sure it's set to BG. Yeah, there we go. See, I'm kind of painting it. And that way I've kind of painted over it further. And then the last thing is I do want to take a darker texture and just kind of put a dark shade that kind of goes all around this whole thing a little bit like this just to give it a little bit more feeling of depth to it. There we go. Awesome. There we go. All right. And I think I'm also going to take all my stones and I'm going to bring the brightness up a little bit to make them pop out. So if I just go to brightness makes them a bit brighter works for me there we go okay so yeah i mean really that's just it's it's really simple right isn't that simple <laughs> no you're like no that was not simple that was not simple at all what are you talking about <laughs> uh volcanic city sounds cool hey you know what i i have i have a time lapse on that i th think yeah 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 if you go to YouTube, there should be a volcanic, there should be one. Uh, oh, oh, and who's working on one right now? I'm doing amazing. Ooh, ooh, King Cloud, ooh, Volcano City. I love it. I love it. I think I like everything lava. It's hot. It's real hot. I'll tell you right now, it's hot. Spicy. <laughs> 
All right, so technically this is called River Bridges Stream. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, well, all right. <laughs> so I just want to mention again the same techniques that we did to put stuff underwater, like this, these grasses, uh, this, um, this log right here is underwater. It's just changing the luminosity blend mode. It's the same thing that we did with the brick right here to show that that's underwater. That's really, really the trick for that. Remember, you want to paint the dark, the deeper parts of the water darker. So just use that same water texture you use and just change the brightness. Of course, change the opacity and just paint in your darker regions and paint in your lighter regions, which is going to be uh, shallower water closer up against your uh, the, the shore of your river. If there's just a straight decline, uh, uh, incline that just goes or decline that goes down, you don't have to add as much shadowing unless there's directional shadows. Okay, so just thinking about that really, really helps. Is there any other questions that people have about rivers? Uh, real quick, we can go ahead and do a quick Q&A, about five, 10 minutes, and we can kind of go over uh, some things that people missed. Uh, remember, this video will be added to YouTube, so you can go and check it out there if you missed any of it, okay? Nice long video. <laughs> the last couple have been like 2.5 hours. They've been a little long there, so, but hey, you know what? Getting the good content takes a time, right? Of course. And hey, don't forget, join our Discord. If you have suggestions for future streams, go join our Discord. Go to the Rolls channel. Click Incarnator. Go to Stream Requests and type in your request. Make sure that you follow the directions of that channel first. There is a format for requests. It's not a very hard format. It's just the style in which you want the stream to be in. That means the map style, world, fantasy world, battle maps, watercolor battle maps. Add that style. Then next line below, type in what you want. You want to say uh, forests. You want to see how to make a lake. You want to see how to make an underwater temple, lava city, whatever it is you want. Go ahead and add that in there. Okay. Uh, what kind of criminals get imprisoned in the river? The dam prison? Well, I'll be damned. I don't know. How should I know? I'm not part of the River, River Council. They have called me a heretic because I do not adhere to the River Council's uh, pro proclamations. I'm a bit of a rebel, you see. I don't follow that. Yes, rivers flow upwards, naturally. Of course, duh. Logic. <laughs> Dude owned logic. Hello. <laughs> rivers flow up. Waterfalls flow up. Gravity goes up. <laughs> Gravity is upward direction, the opposite of what you're used to here on our lovely planet Earth, <laughs> where things like to go down after they go up. <laughs> or they just go down. <laughs> hey, keep throwing in more questions, all right? Throw in those questions. You ask me right now, okay? You just say, just grab me by the collar. Tell me right now, how do I do this? <laughs> and I will do it. I. I am a humble servant of the incarnate community. <laughs> what do you mean? Water is still and land flows. <laughs> Baba the best cue. That is an excellent, excellent point. I shall give you two points immediately. <laughs> Are there no questions? Are none of you curious enough? Or do you, are you afraid? You shouldn't be afraid of me. I'm pretty uh, non-intimidating. <laughs> I'm not intimidating. I'm just goofy, all right? I'm just a total goofball, all right? I'm a goofy goober. That's me. I'm a goofy goober. Oh. <laughs> Come on, ask your questions. No questions? And if there are no questions, oh, have you, uh, have you shows how to make a river on a large world map? I do think um, if you go to, uh, there are a couple videos on how to make uh, world maps and you can watch, I think all three of those, there's a couple of them. There's how to create a parchment map, there's how to create a world map, world map two, and a couple other ones. Go check those out and there are sections in there. They should be, um, they should be labeled. I do do chapter titles so it's easier for you to navigate through the videos instead of just one giant glob. <laughs> on the video, you're like, wait a minute, do I have to search for 20 minutes to find what I'm looking for? No. It's called 
chapter titles, and I have implemented them to make your life easier. It has not made my life easier because I have to comb through the whole video to find him. <laughs> but it makes your life easier. I suffer so that you will not, okay? That is what I am here for, to help you. <laughs> well, it doesn't look like there are any other questions. Unless you want to fit it in quick, careful, quickly. Baba, the best cue, do you have it? Oh, Bobert, the best cue. I'm sorry, I've been saying Bobber. How rude. <laughs> Bobert, the best cue. How dare I? How rude. <laughs> Industry show techniques for rivers in the world maps. I did actually in the earlier parts. I did show you. Uh, let me quickly just kind of save and go out. For those of you who didn't come in from the beginning, let me show you the guides. I'm just going to do this real quick. Uh, no questions pertaining to the topic. You are welcome to ask questions to other topics if you want. That's fine. I don't mind. I mean, unless you're trying to ask for my credit card information, and which I will have to decline. <laughs> I, I'm not going to give you that. How much sleep did you get last night? That's a personal question. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll go ahead and show you these guides real quick. I do have lots and lots of visual guides. If you go to my profile, in fact, if you go to uh, the Explore page and you just type in guide in the search field and the Explore page, I've labeled all my guides guide in the front so that when you type in guide in the search field, hey, they're all there. And there's a lot. So there's a lot of guides and I'll show you a couple of them real quick. Again, go to, go to my profile on uh, my account and you'll go ahead and see them. So for those of you who didn't, who weren't here before, we went over in the beginning a couple things. We went over a river's journey. Uh, if you go to my profile, you'll find this. Again, I just want to mention that I did not come up with this guide on my own. I uh, got the idea from the encyclopedia. So that's where that came from. And this guy just kind of gives you a beginning to end journey on how rivers operate. You'll see that there are some uh, bullet points down at the bottom. Those will help you through the steps on there. So go check that out. There's also another guide uh, with rivers and it more pertains to using the path tool because sometimes the stroke, uh, because sometimes the um, Sometimes the uh, mask tool is not sufficient enough to work at such a very, very small scale, very zoomed out. Sometimes you want to have a thinner line. Well, stroke one might not be big enough, might not be big enough. So you might have to use the path tool and the path tool can get very, very small. And just as well, sometimes uh, with a lot of world maps, especially at a really zoomed out scale, you don't even see rivers. You don't even see them. You don't have to add rivers at all if you don't want to. When it comes to rivers on my world maps, I only add them in there unless uh, my players are going to interact with that river. So if there's bridges leaning over that river, then I will include that river in the world map. If you have a river in there and it has zero function other than looks, that's fine too. It can purely be an aesthetic for you because rivers look cool. But if you don't have an encounter map or uh, a re or a a regional map or any other map that kind of has that river in there, it's no real, real reason to, reason to add it in there. It's about less work for you, especially for you private contractors who are trying to make your daily bread by selling your beautiful, your masterpieces to the masses. Hey, you, you're, you're, a little, you're a little tight on time, right? You're looking at your, your watch, which doesn't exist anymore. Instead, you're looking at your phones and you're thinking, holy smokes, I gotta get this done in four hours. Well, hey, do less work. Don't add in rivers in every part of your map. Do less work, okay? That's really the secret to that, okay? But this guide is specifically on how to use the path tool uh, to make your rivers. But I've also included the guide as well with you know where things start, how it goes, the flow, and everything like that. So it's just to help you out there. So go check those guides out on the profile. And then uh, we also did in the beginning a little diagram about how uh, meandering and that stuff works. So go check that out in the beginning of the video. Replay value, boop, boop. Okay, so hey, just so you know, there's only one more stream left uh, in the month. That's tomorrow. I'm not doing a stream. I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a day off for once. I'm gonna still be working on Monday, but I will not be doing a stream on Monday the 30th. But don't worry, we'll still be doing streams that week 
okay? Don't worry, we're gonna do a lot. We have so many streams coming up. If you thought we had a lot of videos on our channel, <laughs> we're just getting started. And yes, I learned that evil laugh in villain school. I've been practicing for hours. Yeah, it, it, it's great. <laughs> so hey, one more stream in the month. That's tomorrow, the 26th, and it's on how to make mountain ranges. It probably won't be for every style because really you're only going to see mountain ranges really in, in the world styles and regional styles. You likely will not see a whole mountain on a battle map. Uh, you probably would with a, a watercolor city, but probably not with a battle map, okay? I know, I, I totally failed. I, I mean, like major mistake, like banana slip, oops, face plant into poop. Yeah, that's it. That's what happened. All right. Verbatim. Three out of four doctors agree. I promise. <laughs> All right. So tomorrow, mountain ranges, 10 a.m. PST. Be there or be square. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be a great stream. So we're going to have fun with that. It's going to be probably in the same format as this one. I'll probably start with explaining a little bit about plate tectonics and how mountain ranges form. Believe me, it's not going to be too much detail and I'll probably slip. So all of you armchair scientists out there, pipe up and make sure to correct me where I go wrong because believe me, I will. Banana slip poop face. All right. So help me out, folks. It's a collective experience. We're learning from each other. There are no masters. There are all students here, including myself. All right. Well, hey, everybody. It's been great. I've had a great time. You're all so sweet. You're all so awesome. It's hump day. We're almost there, okay? Just a couple more days till the weekend, all right? You guys are awesome. Absolutely loved you have you having you here. I'm looking forward to seeing some of your faces tomorrow on how to make mountain ranges. Hey, please stay safe and healthy and merry map making. See you all tomorrow. You better be there or I'll probably do nothing about it. Auf Wiedersehen. Bye-bye.